Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Bamburi Super Series Final 2014. It's Kefaro versus Papa after four hard weeks of competitive, of, of competitive compelling rugby. It's down to the final two here at the RFA grounds in Nairobi. Kefaro taking on Papa in the 2014 Bamburi Super Series. If you're just joining us, my name is William Juguna and I'm in, in the set with me today is a former, is a former rugby player very distinguished uh, character and gentleman, Hilary Taylor. Thank you very much, William. Indeed, it has actually been a very exciting tournament in this year's event. 2014 has basically seen a couple of upsets. UAP Kifaru making it for their very first final. It is a franchise made up of university teams uh, across Kenya. Uh, and they will meet um, a very, very interesting outfit. The players have done the final warm-ups. They've headed back to the sheds. All, to, all geared up to wear their kit and to play on the pitch and it's going to be one heck of a final between Kifaru and Papa. Of course, just to remind our viewers that Kifaru is made up of the university franchises and uh, Papa is made up of Mwamba and KCB. So after the break, we'll come back with the final of the Rugby, Rugby Super Series 2014. We go for a commercial break and we'll be back shortly. Welcome to Scrum Down, your one-stop shop for all matters rugby. I'm your host, Larry Asego, joined by Jotham Makang, and of course, uh, former Kenya international, and of course, currently on the team, uh, coaching bench of the Sevens uh, team, uh, that is, the uh, team needs no introduction. <laughs> and we are live at the RFA grounds uh, for the grand finale of the Bamburi Rugby Super Series. Gentlemen, March Day 5. Jotham, I know you've been waiting for this moment for a very long time. Finally, it is here. It's here, and I know it's been quite an exciting build-up. We started off with six teams, uh, two pools. We had, of course, our friendly neighbors in Uganda coming in. Yes. By the end of the day, we only have two Kenyan sides here in the finals, and the question is, who will win? Because also, let's remember, it's the first time a university franchise, UAP Kifaru, are in the finals. Who will win? That's really what I want. Let me ask the tactician something, first of all, about uh, the previous games. I mean, we don't have any Ugandan side here in the final. Uh, I mean, is this a trend? Is it that we have upped our game? Is it that the Ugandan sides have just fallen by the wayside? Toti, what can you say? I think there's a lot of rugby being played in Kenya in this particular time. I mean, there are lots of kids, lots of rugby being played across across the country. Yeah. And uh, and we know inside Kenyans are very passionate about their rugby. So that has obviously created a depth of players that could be picked. Because, I mean, today with an international going on, we're still able to stage the third and fourth and the finals of the, of the Bamburi Super Series, which is obviously a good indicator for the Kenya rugby and the, and the nation True. As, as a whole in terms of going forward of rugby. But today, two big games are taking place, and that is at the third and fourth playoff uh, between Chui and they are playing Ndovu. Of course, Ndovu, everybody assumed that Ndovu was going to make it to the finals, but that was not to be Kifaru. Do you say Kifaru might just take this one, Toti? Uh, I'm, I'm feeling, I mean, their, their tails are up, they're looking to build up on the momentum from the semi-finals and I'm sure they'll move the ball around a bit, you know, and, and, and I mean, university size, you know how it is, yes, comrade power. Very I mean, that's the, they're, they're going to come here with, 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 with one intention, obviously, to get positive results today. Jotham, if you were to call it, uh, how, would you, how would you put it? Kifaru or uh, is it going to Papa? Well, first off, <laughs> since I'm not allowed to be biased, analytically, you Papa come in undefeated. I think they're the only undefeated side. Yes. And uh, Papa and uh, Kifaru met each other early on. I think stage match day three. Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, Papa took the game with the uh, last minute score. Yes. Something that really wounded uh, Kifaru. Mm -hmm. So I think it's going either way. But if it comes down to tackle and strategy, I think just maybe Kifaru may take it because the same one the game they had last week <laughs> against the bigger. Dover side, yes. I just brought to them, pushing and won the game. I'd say maybe Kifaru have stand a strong chance. To play it. Well, only time will tell who is going to take this one. But it's a very difficult one. We have another game that is taking place between Chui. And uh, Chui, of course, is the Ngong Road United, as they call themselves. That is Kenya Harley Quinns and Nondis and, of course, uh, Impala RFC. I, and <laughs> No, look, I mean, Chui, they've had the ups and downs. Yeah. And of course, uh, they're, they're, playing, uh, they're playing Dovu, uh, who lost to Kifara last weekend. Uh, that game currently very tied. They're defending champions and they fell out yes, at the last minute. Toti, I mean, Dovu, everybody expected them in, but they're playing Chui right now. How would you call it? Chui or Ndovu? I think it's, it's, it's a beauty of rugby of this process where we cannot, we cannot check it's going to come. Yeah, probably. How they come up with the day, you know, play the tactics. Um, I think I think Dovu are, we will go into this game, you know, hoping to, to build up on their disappointment last week. Yes, and I don't we just reach back. 
And of course, uh, one thing that has always been coming up, a talking point, is the fact that maybe the teams don't have enough time to train as they get into the Bamboo Rugby Super Series, the different franchises. Uh, we've seen that the Ngongoro United, all of them on one side, which is which is a plus. But if you see uh, teams, for example, Kisumu RFC, if you see uh, Western Bulls, and if you see Nakuru RFC, the distance is just too big for them to actually train effectively. Going, for, going forward, what do you think is going to uh, be the solution for this? How can we curb this in terms of preparation for the, for the match days? Today. Later. This weekend. But they've, they've refused. Yes. Then they've refused. Uh, True. So hopefully, it's going to be a good time. Well, only time will tell. This is a match day five, the grand finale of the Bamburi Rugby Super Series. We've got two big games, of course, the third and fourth playoff between Chui and they're taking on, uh, I mean, they're taking on Dovu and the grand finale everybody's waiting for, Kifaru. They are taking on Papa. Who will win it? Only time will tell. This is Scrum Down. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Bamburi Super Series 2014 final. It's Kifaru, the university sides made up of uh, university players against, uh, against Papa, made up of Kenya Commercial Bank and Mwamba. Just a reminder to our viewers, Kifaru made it to the final after beating uh, Dovu 22 points to 19 last week in Machagos, while uh, Dovu beat uh, Chui 30 points to 23 last week also in Machakos and uh, these are the lineups. Papa Nguvu has uh, uh, Katu Muturi, Temesi Sangara, Ni Kongeri, Indimuli Aswani, Mulama, Wanjala, Shaban, Moseti, Omondi, Mwale, Omuka, Lugonzo. Probably looks like the same lineup, uh, maybe 80% of what KCB would probably uh, place up in any final. That's Papa Nguvu for you coached by Kati Zolago. The results for Papangu will be Mukabi, Karia, Steve Watch, Kisai Louis, Esau Otieno, Max Kangeri, Peter Kefa, Ojo Felix. Technical team, as I stated earlier, Curtis Olago, head coach, John Bai, a former Kenyan International Center as assistant coach, and Oscar Mango, brother to Leslie Mango, former Kenya International fullback, is the team manager of the Papangu outfit. On the Kifaru side, the lineup is as follows uh, Thomas Okidia, Ezra Lagarde, Paul Mwikia, Andrew Chogo, Martin Tubula, Kelvin Gasheru, Eli Mukaizi, Rocky Anguko, George Mutuku, Haron Lubisia, Alvin Otieno, Brad Oduako, Kevin Ochame, Stanley Lunani, Pierce Shundu. The it's substitute bench. Back into the... Substitute <laughs> bench. <laughs> substitute bench has Jimmy Mwangi, Greg Dadman, Soita Wekesa, Colin Zocheng, Kevin Bundy. Caleb Kiprotich, Israel Zoe, Brian Kivasia, and the coach is Charles Govi, and the, and the team manager is uh, Eric Ogueno. Because the weather favors free flowing rugby. Did rain yesterday, ground has actually sort of dried up. Um, it's not extremely hot, so we do not expect to see the level of fatigue that we had in the Kenya Cup when we had scorching heat of about 32 degrees from about uh, 2 p.m. on the afternoon. So great weather. Up out fast in the green strip, Papangu, they will definitely be looking at actually just getting this tournament. They have looked a different outfit compared to the one that they had last year. And they'll be followed shortly by UAP Kifaru, who, I mean, despite all the odds, have managed to just sneak their way into the final. Credit to them. Yeah, Papa, of course, in the green, in the green jerseys, black shorts, black socks. And here come now Kifaru, the university side, in their blue blue and white outfit. First time Kifaru in the final, Papa have been here before under a different name, I guess, but uh, it won't be the first time in the final. It's Papa versus Kifaru in the Bamburi Super Series final 2014. Your match referees, your match referee is Constant Cup, assisted by Nicolas Gashoya and Raymond Ruo with uh, TMO Paris Mukoko. The weather conditions, very cloudy, your typical June weather. And on hand to receive them will be the Kenya Rugby Union Chairman Mwangi Mude and the Bamburi uh, Marketing Manager Susan Maengi. This is the Bamburi Super Series Final 2014 at the RFUA ground here on Gong Road.
Mwangemu, the Kenya Rugby Union chairman, of course, an established international himself. Very, very gritty um, prop in his day. Did play against him a couple of times, and um, I can tell you one thing, that fellow there is as tough as nails. Huh? <laughs> Former Kenya prop, I saw him playing for Kenya at the 1993 Rugby World Cup qualifiers against Zimbabwe. We lost the game, I think, 42-7, but he was up front playing a very key role for, for the Kenya side. A great servant of the game, also served as Mwamba coach in the later part of the 90s and early 2000s when you're still playing. Um, always great to see a former player just coming back, getting at the helm of the game to be able to ensure that the next group of players can enjoy the benefits. In the picture right now is Rocky Anguyo, UAP Kifaru, captain. This gentleman has just kept on growing, you know, from strength to strength in each and every particular game. Um, just on the side of the pitch, I can see the Kenya Sevens head coach, Poultry, walking on in. So definitely perhaps also a chance for him to just see what other level of talent exists within the Kenyan code. And um, I mean, there's definitely no one who has a right to any, any part of the national team code. So any of these players might probably feel hard done for not getting selected to the 15th team that will be getting taking part in the Rugby World Cup qualifier. But of course, there are very other, various other competitions that they can take part in and um, a chance just to go around and prove and show that they actually have what it takes to play in this particular level. Absolutely, Fred. And we are just seconds away from uh, the Mamburi Super Apart Series final. A uh, very fair crowd here. Super there are a few grounds final. on a cloudy, cold June, uh, June afternoon here in Nairobi. Okay. If you're just joining us, it's the Mamburi Super Series final 2014. Kifaru versus Papa <laughs> Not many had expected these two sides to be in the final, but uh, Sport being the way it is throws up some very, some very interesting storylines. So it's going to be Papa playing from Lou left behind right. the kicker. Get you behind you, Aaron Lubisa there on your screen holding the ball, set to kick off UAP Kifaru in this match. Aaron Lubisa the was the destroying chief in Kakamega when UAP Kifaru last met Papa and Gugu. And will it be a case of the same uh, tonic being meted out? We'll okay, know in the next minutes. So from right to left on your screen is your Piki Faru. Found it in. Ball kicked in and quickly set off Found after a line out by, by Papa Ngobu, not blue. looking at uh, making anything fancy within the territory. So we'll have the first line out, uh, your Piki Faru gets a chance to throw in the ball. Yes, remember these two sides Mark clashed in Kakamega on March five, day please. two. Both sides. With uh, okay, Papa green. winning by the narrowest of margins, eight points to six. A late, late try there, I think scored by Bush Mwale, that gave them the victory. So. Kifaru off to attack, but not a very good pass there to Haron Lubise, so it will be a knock on there. Haron um, Lubise there, an, an uncharacteristic um, fumble down in there. He's, uh, he's a very calm, composed player who just does the best he's quite well. So maybe needs to just shake off a couple of the jitters in the system and just understand that this is a cup final and each and every single moment actually counts. Yeah, he needs to just to settle because he's playing a very critical position. He is playing at fly half for Kifaru. He's the go to man in that team. Very, a very integral player, a very integral position he's playing, so he needs to get his composure uh, right. Good break there by number eight there from uh, Papa there, Humphrey Mulama. Breaking a few tackles, getting a few meters for his team. Salaton Mutwiri taking the ball up front. And Kifaru, of course, are displaying their strength and power in the rucks and in the malls there. Some very good quick first play there from uh, Papa. Trying to get up, trying to build a platform for their for their backs in this encounter. You do get a feeling, William, however, that they're not really setting up the rocks as they ought to. And maybe if you Piki Faru just decided to just exert a little bit more on the counter racks, they may be able to turn over a couple of balls. Still early stages though, and uh, more than what, maybe 79 minutes to play for. But they need to be able to consolidate and just ensure that everything that they actually do is done to clear conversation. And uh, the ball is actually quite key in defending it, will be one of their key priorities for both these teams. Ken was sitting with an up and under there, but he didn't travel. Really? He didn't have to travel, but it's, oh, blue. it's all Papa right now. Papa have a dangerous backline. Getting into some phase of play there Rock. that we don't see him so much into. We know him as a, as a speed merchant, but it's all Papa right now. Alan Muk, of course, has been a joy to watch in this year's event. Coming off from a two-year, almost career-threatening injury, always is great to see players just coming back and looking much more devastating, much more stronger than they were prior to the injuries. Absolutely. Some kick for territory there from uh, Shaban Ahmed. But uh, Constant Cup says that Kifaru were not 10 meters. So it's going to be penalty there for Papa. Papa off to a very... Strong start. The 
the 10 meter line. If you're just joining us, this is the Bamburi Super Series Final 2014. Kifaru versus Papa, we've barely played two minutes in this game. And uh, Papa decided to go for the points. It's a final, remember, so every point will count, Hillary. Definitely indeed, of course. Um, Michael Wanjala looks like he's going to take the three points. Shaban Ahmed has um, gotten the nod of approval from Coach Curtis Olago. He's a very, very nippy player and um, managed place the Sao Tien, who's a, a little bit more of a conservative player onto the bench. So maybe a case of just trying to showcase what the coach has in his mind. He's perhaps looking at just you know, <coughs> throwing the entire kitchen sink <coughs> onto UAP Kifaru's way and not just leaving anything uh, for the second half. Absolutely, uh, Hillary. I think uh, some changes there. Um, Peter Kefa played last week and actually scored, I think, 15 points against uh, Chui. But he's only on the bench today. So some, some tactical changes there from Kifaru. On his life? Doesn't, doesn't have the legs to go. And George Mutuku with uh, pants. He's gone back! Alan Omuka can't get a hand on it. Ken Mosetti kicks it back. Akin. Not a very good kick there from uh, Ken Mosetti. I think he should have a little bit more um, back by green line composure there. He was looking at kicking the ball in his own 22, but in the process just got himself crossing over. So okay, maybe Jan just green. a case of uh, the jitters not settling in and um, Straight lines. maybe just uh, telling the state of mind that the players on both sides of the pitch currently still have. Quick line out yeah. throw in by Yuepiki Faro. They lose the ball. It's a free fall all over right now. No. Pampangu managed. Alan Omuka gets shrugs of two defenders. Alan Omuka is Can devastating once he actually gets past uh, acceleration the five meter mark, showing just uh, what he's capable of doing right in there. Returns in the referee, not too keen on that. That will be a forward pass and there'll be a scrum down for you, Epiki Faru. So far, very, very stop and, st I mean, stop and start game from, I mean, from both sides, particularly from Papa. And that uh, will play into the hands of uh, Kifaru. Who like to play an open game, and uh, no team really having settled into their into their rhythm. But still, the early days in this game, and uh, probably after a couple of more minutes, we can tell how this game is going. Maybe each side will try and play to its strengths, and uh, it's going to be a scramble now for Kifaru and George Mutuku, who got a concussion last week with the ball there to the scrum, but playing a very critical role there as he tries to for some play from his forward. And it's all Kifaru right now. Rocky and Guko. Watching by Blue. Tiring big man. Okay, Green, don't touch if you're down. George Mutuku again. Aaron Lubisia. <laughs> Great show <laughs> from the Bernardo Blanco. Ran straight into Ken Mosetti. He's also not a small man. And um, I mean, you could hear the crowd just getting into some level of delirious <laughs> celebration <laughs> there. Aaron I mean, definitely getting what the, the money has been paid for. Eh? Aaron Lubisia there trying to, trying to move away from the scrum, but Is sucked in back again. But it's still going to be a Kifaru ball. Release green. Back foot green. Mutuku again. Here's Shiundu. Shiundu tackled by three okay, players there from green. Kifaru. Back foot, back foot. Mutuku again. That's not a very good kick, but uh, it's handed yeah. back to Papa, who win the ball right now. And they're trying to maul it. Release. But once again, Kifaru Rock. counter rocking very well, but Blue. it's all. Papa right now. Great right there by Indimuli. Oh Draw back, but unfortunately oh just uh, lost yeah, the ball on the, on the way board. down and the referee doesn't well like that, so a little bit of careless play there after just, I mean, some great build-up. I mean, that's, that's one of the items that would probably just suck off uh, all the air and energy from your teammates. <laughs> you do very well, get about 20 meters, and all of a sudden, <laughs> you know, you just lose it out. Yes, uh, I, I, I mean, it's very discouraging but it's going to be a penalty for Kifaru and George Mutuku Kifaru of to go for the post Kifaru of course are coached by former Kenyan international and uh, Impala uh, player uh, Charles Govi and Tito Duke uh, Papa of course are led by Curtis Olago and uh, John Bai so can Kifaru give us the first point on the board in this Bamburi Super Series final 2014 George Mutuku had a blind of a game against Renzori with the boot and with his tactical play. Takes it. No, it doesn't. Didn't have the accuracy. It's a missed opportunity. 
So both sides have already missed the opportunities with the penalties. I don't know if it's the nerves or what, Hillary. It's, it's very interesting that uh, George Mutuku has actually been selected to be the first choice kicker. Aaron Lubisi also has a very nice pair of boots on him and um, I think Mutuku is well aware that if he just uh, squanders maybe another one, he probably would lose the chance to kick up a post. So still remains 0-0. Zero, zero. Um, both teams still keeping their clouds quite close to the chest. Lubisi has spread the ball to Shimushindu. Well nailed there by Ken Mosetti. Some great line speed on defense being shown there by UAP. Uh, by, by, by Papa Nguvo on UAP Kifaru. Great shrug there by Ruki Nguvo. That's exactly what he's capable of. He doesn't know any other way to play the rugby uh, game other than just running through the man. He creates a space for himself, literally. <laughs> very, very towering. Very, very good break there from Rocky Anguko. Showing scant regard for his opposite, for, for, the, for, the, for his opponent there. Shrugging him off and winning some, uh, some good meters for, for Kifaru. And Lubise now will kick it out. Does he find touch? So it's going to be a line out here. When, no, the ball went straight out. It went, it went, it went dead. So it's going to go back to why the kick was placed, and it's going to be a proper ball and a missed opportunity there for Kifaru. Alvin Oteni on your picture there. I was trying to chase the ball down. We actually saw what he's capable of doing in Nakuru. Very devastating player. Has a, some 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 very intricate stepping mechanism and also has some ability to just break away from the defense. Coach. And uh, if Lubisi can actually manage to just find a way of constantly getting with the game, the new Epikifaru may probably just get a chance to revenge against the loss that they suffered against uh, Papa Ngubu in Kakamega about a month ago. Good break there from... Uh, looks like Brian Omondi to be there. actually Augustin Lugonzo. Augustin eh? Lugonzo. He's become bulkier and stronger. And all of a sudden, out of nothing, new Epikifaru almost get a chance to move on through. Yeah, Piki Faru actually missing Daniel Oteno. Daniel Oteno is one of the standard players in uh, Nakuru. Very, very dominant in the lineup, very dominant in the open face play, in the breakdowns, did very well in defense. But it looks like he did not manage to get into the final because of, I suspect, an injury. Yes, yes, he had an injury, I think, in that game against, uh, against Ruenzori. So not there, and his, his, his robustness, of course, is being missed by, by Kifaru. And a very scrappy opening 10 minutes we've had so far. None of the teams have settled into, into a rhythm and that was not straight according to Constant Cap and he's called for it to be retaken again. Okay, there was no gap there at the line out. So the referee calling for the gap, the, the, I mean, they shouldn't be too close. So it's going to be another line out feed from Papa. It's won by Kifaru, George Mutuku. No, 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 it's okay. Joey Mutuku quickly closed in there by the Papanguvu defense, losing out on the ball. Should actually just be, you know, cursing himself and maybe just trying to understand what could have been done better in there. Um, they get a line out. They, they defend the line out deep within the Papanguvu territory. But uh, I think Kifaru should have done better in there. As opposed to looking for a quick ball out, they should have tried to consolidate in because Mutuku was swamped as soon as he had the ball in there. So maybe I need to change the tactics. <laughs> yeah, probably. In your picture shot there, we saw Ian Indimuli. Uh, and it's going to be Salaton Muturi, Wamba player, fitting this ball into the line out. And once again, very scrappy from the line out, and Kifaru win that ball. George Mutuku. Ezra well, Lagarde showing some great, uh, great level of uh, you know, attention to detail in there, getting the ball quickly. Anguyo getting the ball in, consolidating. Kifaru still retain the ball. Despite uh, all of uh, Nguvu, Nguvu Papa's uh, efforts. Okay. And Bradley Odwako looks like he got himself into a bit of a mess in there. Gets held up, but UAP Kifaru quickly realizes that they need to adapt. They drive it on about four meters. Looks like it's stopping. Nguvu know if they hold onto the ball, they'll be able to get a scrum advantage. Putting Kifaru managed to keep the ball down. They need to get it out now and play out some of the players to see if at all they can just uh, go around and strike the first points in. Aaron Lubisia from about 40 meters with a drop kick attempt. And it's absolute it's beauty. beauty. What, a, what, a, what a good attempt there from Aaron Lubisia. And you could just even hear our fans saying in the stands that <laughs> the drop goal is coming. And Aaron Lubisia with a drop goal that gives Kifaru three points to zero. He often looks like he's just lazing up and about, but he sure does have a very, very quick and accurate boot to actually match up his uh, capacity as uh, the starting fly-off. Didn't see that coming if you ask me, but what a good attempt there from Harold Libisia. Just to make sure that the game is, I mean, you, they've been stuck at this place. They've been stuck in the, in the, in the papa half for 
last couple of minutes and it's all about being in the opponent's half and getting some points and they have done that and they lead by three points to nil Harun Lubisia who scored the winning penalty against uh, Dovu last week in Machakos and that was an excellent drop goal because Aaron Lubisi, who played early, his early part, the, the, the early part of his rugby at KCB, knows all too well most of these players in the Papanguva outfit, and um, you know taking his chances and just showing just the ability that he has, and maybe putting up his hand. For yes, selection. absolutely. I think he knows all the tricks of his of his of his former players who are playing in the Papa side, and uh, Papa penalised again by the referee. They are penalised, and Lubisi will try to get his team out of. The 22. Lubisi not with the best uh, not penalty the kick there. <laughs> Perhaps got uh, a bit distracted by George Mutuku who just <laughs> ran past him as a striker. Still they great. retain possession and uh, they just need to consolidate on the line out and uh, maybe get a better clearance of this line out. So, for, so far from the two three line outs we've seen, very, very messy. N no, none being able to win its own throw perfectly, but once again, uh, Kifaru win that one, but the, the, our first clean line-out we've seen so far after 14 minutes of play. Remember, it's a Bamburi Super Series final. Uh, there are a few grounds here on Gong Road. Uh, if you haven't made your way, plenty of time to come down and watch some entertaining rugby here between Kifaru and uh, Papa. Kifaru leading by three points to nil after 14 minutes. Nick Ongeri manages to somehow get the ball in there. Lubisia took the ball in, steers down, looks like he's holding his head. Something looks like to have uh, hit him on the head. Mulama pick, quicks, quickly picks up the ball, drives on for about three meters. They've got numbers of Brian Otieno, Brian Omondi, I, I beg your pardon, gets the ball to Agassi Ligonzo. Referee doesn't like the pass, calls for a forward pass. And uh, it will be scrum advantage for UAP Kifaru. Lubisia manages to pick himself up, just perhaps got a knock to the head, maybe from <laughs> Ongeri who picked out the ball. But um, UAP, UAP, UAP Papa just don't look, sorry, UAP Kifaru look like they're just doing a lot to absorb all the Papa Nguvu uh, uh, challenges, you know, face by face. And this is the kind of stuff that just goes around and knocks off all the energy from a team, you see. Once you keep on attacking over and over again and you don't get a chance to score points, it starts working on your ability to believe in yourself yes. as the game progresses. Absolutely, Larry. I think uh, Kifaru have held on very well and not well. The Papa scrum showing their dominance there, wheeling that scrum, and it's going to be their, their scrum feed here. Kifaru have absorbed the pressure very well so far, and uh, they'll be thinking that with a 3 0 lead so far, it's, it's a good start, but still a lot of rugby to be played here at the RFU grounds in the Bamburi Super Series final between Papa and Kifaru. Crouch! Michael Wanjala. Fine. Papa in a very strong attacking position, if they can get it right. Humphrey Mulama trying to gain some meters there. He gained some yards, but brought down eventually by Kifaru. Wanjala will attempt to take this ball up to his forwards. Salaton Mutwiri getting the ball now, getting some yardage there. And it's Papa on the attack. Ken Mosetti carrying no prisoners there. Michael Wanjala again, robust, busy at the breakdown, sniping. But held up there, tackles. Wanjala at it again. Papa are literally standing. There is no one who is taking the ball at pace. Well, it comes back here now. Good pass there. Oh, not a very good pass. Knock on at it eventually. And uh, the momentum which, which Papa had has just gone. I think Papa have to be very careful. The person who got the ball right before the referee blew the whistle, Alvin Oteno, is the last person you'd actually unpick the ball because <laughs> Alvin Oteno looks deceptively big, but quite fast, extremely fast. Ball just landed on his hand, and I think uh, Papa should actually <laughs> thank the referee for blowing the whistle in there. I think if Alvin Oteno was allowed to move on through with that, he'd probably have been stopped, if not behind the try line area, very close to the try area. Very true, Larry. He's a, he's a very strong, robust character with... Uh, with a very good speed, so he'd be he'd be one player that Papa will have to keep an eye. And his opposite number, Alan Omuka, we, re we really have to watch him. So it's going to be a scrum feed now for Kifaru. Kifaru. Crouch. Kifaru. George Fine. Mutuku, who suffered a concussion last week, but it seems raring and fit to win this game. And Rocky Anguko. Rocky taking his man down there. Good break there from Rocky Anguko. 
And Rocky Nguyo has just kept on pummeling through over and over again. Gets a penalty this time around from the resultant track. It looks like the referee was not too happy about how the defense formed on through. And there you actually see what the ability that the captain Rocky Nguyo has in just, you know, getting his team back into the game from absolutely nothing. Why? Wow, and you can see, and you can see it there on the, on this. Okay, we haven't seen it on slow mo, but the impact was huge. And Kifaru seemed to be enjoying every bit of it. They are leading by three points to nil. We haven't seen anything from Papa so far with 18 minutes played. I think Shaban Ahmed is still on the ground. After that knock by Rocky Nguyo, Shaban Ahmed looks like he's beginning to pick himself up. Rocky Nguyo, just as a testament to him, he's quite a rock. And um, I'm not too certain whether Shaban might be able to stay on. From the touch, and you can see a certain warming up. Line out still continues on through. Referee doesn't think it's straight. It will be a scrum down put in for Papa. It looks like uh, Shaban Ahmed might be in a spot of bother. Esau Otieno gets into the field of play for him at number 10. I think Rocky Anguyo's work is to perhaps eliminate um, <laughs> the backline players one by one. So Esau Shaban Ahmed. Esau Otieno has gotten into the field of play. And um, just from Shaban Ahmed's body language, it does not look like he might be getting back in. Yeah, he badly, he looks clearly winded. That was a thundering hit by... <laughs> Thundering hit by Rocky Aguko, the, the Kifaru captain. Captain. And it's going to be a scrum feed now for uh, yes, no, no, no. Yes, Papa yes, Nguvu. I haven't captain. seen anything of it, them so far. We've seen it in bits and pieces. Have you made nothing any subs? substantive, nothing that, that can make sub, eh? you sub, jump sub, out of your seat so far. Okay. And uh, Time back on. it's Kifaru who are leading by three points to nil. Let's go now. And uh, down here. Tito Duke Ball was giving some words of wisdom to Harold Lubis here. Who is at fly half? Kifaru leading by three points to zero. <laughs> Coach! Can Papa respond? Bind! Set! We are coming to the halfway mark of this Bambudi Super Series final. Second back. Michael Wanjala to Esa Oteno, and it's a long booming kick. Oh, the bounce of the rugby ball. Misses here in Dimuli. And it's a brilliant break there. Brilliant break from Agustin Nikonko. Brado Duaco does enough to knock off Augustin Lugonzo and that's a turnover tackle in there tackle. and uh, saves UAP Kifaru's blushes. Great hit by Brado Duaco there. Augustin Lugonzo looked like he had a clear run all the clear way to the trial Just didn't anticipate the hit that came in from Brado Duaco. You see Lugonzo moving on in there. Not anticipate then Brado Duaco just smashes him right there. Rocky Anguyo is right over there. Ball pops out and UAP Kifaru get, a, get out of jail card right there. Yes, and it's... 20 minutes gone here, the RFUA grounds, it's a Bambuli Super Series final. Three points to zero. Kifaru are leading. Saraton Mutwiri to feed the line out for Pap for, for Papa Nguvu. Good take there, Yeni Dimuli finds Michael Wanjala. Michael Wanjala finds Esau Tieno. Good thundering tackle, good thundering hit there from, uh, from Esau Tieno. Alan Omukas, I mean, I beg your pardon. Michael Wanjala feeds it to his back line. Ken Mosetti. And Papa on the attack again. It's a brilliant attack there from Papa. Rock! Bush Mwale there. Okay, when and it's Papa on the attack here in the Please, you. Michael Wanjala again. Papa on the attack. They are no smelling the try line here. They are smelling the try line. Ken Mosetti. Mosetti is held back there. He's strong, strong arm defense there from uh, Kifaru. But Wanjala. Still maintains possession of the ball. It's all Kifaru at the moment. Uh, but once again, some poor play. Oh, a tackle there was coming. Still, Papa and Google still retain possession of the ball. They've been taken back 20 yards, but they're actually showing a little bit more excitement and a little bit more flair. They've got better running lines. They're coming in, meeting the ball at pace. And you can see Bush Mwale just getting in there, almost just getting stopped 20 meters from the try line. And Showing the intent to perhaps get their foot back into this game. They're trailing three point, uh, zero points to three and it looks like they're not looking at a penalty but just to go out and score an outright try and signify the intentions of winning this game perhaps. But the, 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 all that they have done for the last five minutes has all been lost because they, um, they have been penalized for some indiscretion at the rock. So it will be a Kifaru ball. And you can see there, um, Ken Mosetti tackled, brought back into play and from that the momentum went backwards. So. Harold Lubisia finding touch. And after all that momentum, Papa haven't scored anything, and it's going to be disheartening for them. 
for all joining us across the continent and within Kenya. Welcome to the RFA grounds. This is the 2014 Bamburi Rugby Super Series final. On your screen is Papa Nguvu playing against UAP Kifaru. Papa Nguvu in the green stripe, UAP Kifaru in the blue. Scores currently lie 3 points to 0, courtesy of a Haron Lubisi, a drop kick in the 11th minute. But uh, from that time, it looked like um, Papa Nguvu had just been showing dominance on the game face by face. Yeah, yeah, dominance, but it's not translating into points because after such a incisive, uh, I mean, spell of pressure from them, they haven't gotten anything on the board. But so far, it's all, it's it's been it's been Papa with with the territory and with the ball in hand. But nothing so far working for them in terms of points. Very good break from Agustin Lugonzo, but well tackled there by uh, by Kifaru's uh, Brado Duaco. It's going to be a scrum fit ball for Papa. 23 minutes gone. It's a Bamburi Super Series final. The referee has given it. He's given a penalty to uh, Kifaru. Kifaru, if, if you ask me, Hillary, are punching above their weight. No one expected them to be in this final. And so far, the way things are standing right now, they look the much composed team. They, know, they, they seem to know what they're doing. And. Uh, Crouch. Papa just haven't come into the party. Bye. I think Kifaru were uh, not touted to be anything close to getting to a, a cup final. They took each and every, literally took every single game in this particular tournament as it came. Money getting the final in, looks like they feel that once they're in the final, they can go on through and just win. There's Altino Tieno looking on through Alan Umuka. That is a great matchup in there. Alan Umuka does want to stop him. Both of them have some serious level of upper body strength. Alan Umuka just slightly uh, helping in there, but I mean, I think there's a lot still remaining in the game to see how that battle will pan up. Kifaru retained the ball. They decide to just um, pick it up and drive up. Okay, Bapu trying to just suck in the, the Nguvu defense in there. Not to start that's actually looking because Nguvu look like they're finding out. You can only see Alan Umuka there and Michael and Jala finding on out. You have Kifaru have the entire forward line in there. And you can see in green, Nguvu finding on out. They're not keen on trying to do the counter rack. They're finding on out, just trying to hold on through. Wait for the fellows to come on through and defend. You can see... They fan out immediately. Oh, and they get the turnover. Turn turnover Somehow. ball. Ken Mosetti has the ball. He's got numbers out. Brian Omondi has it in his hands. Agustin Lugonzo, he's got pace. He gets it out to Mwale. Mwale moves. Mwale moves. Gets tackled at the last end. Agustin Lugonzo retrieves the ball. And that is some great rugby there That's from Dubu. Yes, absolutely. For once, we thought that um, <laughs> Kifaru was only going to score a try, but there was a turnover ball there. And some very good line speed and very quick, quick thinking as seen. Uh, has seen, uh, has seen UAP, I mean, has seen, has seen Papa move up with the ball from their own try line all the way to the, almost to, um, almost to the Kifaru try line, but some very valiant defending there from, uh, uh, from Kifaru, denying okay, what looks uh, like to me a sudden try for, for Papa. Papa and Google also have to be careful though. They don't look like they're trying to tussle in for the ball, they're just finding one out and manage to get one through on Kifaru in there. If they keep on doing that and Kifaru can consolidate enough numbers, then they might actually end up conceding a try. Ooh. Great pick of the ball there by Alvin Otieno. He has Brian Omondi seem to play. Alvin Otieno moving. We know he's got great pace. Alvin Otieno gets driven off, pass it in back, and that is the sort of player that Alvin Otieno is. This is what we're talking about, William. Yes. Is Alvin Otieno a bit of space, he can make you count, and I believe you've not seen the last one. It looks like he's a bit of bother in there. Alan Did very well, brushed off Brian Omondi, and deceptively very fast for his size. Huh? Agassi Lugonzo eventually comes on in to just support Brandon Mundi and uh, makes a telling tackle. Ali, there was a, I think there was a collision between Alan Omuka and uh, Alvin Otieno there. As the ball was high up in the air, both players went for it and uh, Al Alan Omuka looks worse for me. I think there was a collision in the air there. Looks uh, like he got a cut on the mouth. That'll probably be a blood bin. He'll be out for about 10 minutes, just get a stitch. I'm certain Alan Omuka still has a lot to play in this game. You can see Peter Kefa warming up maybe getting to the blood bin. And that's what Alvin Otieno is capable of doing. Just <laughs> taking it, taking, taking, taking the party straight into Alan Omuka's stuff. Maybe Stop just once. trying to throw the gauntlet and just setting the stage for the rest of the game. Yes. And that's how Otieno not finding the distance with that kick and it's going to be a line-out ball for Kifaru. 26 minutes gone. It's the, 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 the game has come into life with that break from Alvin Otieno. And a bit of a collision there with, Alv with Alan Omuka, but Omuka should be fine. Okay. Tito Duke on the corner of your screen there with the cowboy hat, <laughs> looking very animated, perhaps just uh, driving to get into the pitch as well. 
<laughs> he would love to, definitely. Leon! Once again, the line not the best from uh, I've seen, but Seven hey, minutes. the ref Backfoot. gives it a pass. Minutes. George Mutuku, Harold Lubisia, and a good break there from him. Bunchage. Harold Lubisia tackled, and the ball has been stolen Bunchage by over. Ken Mosleton. It's a long kick downfield. It comes out, and uh, Papa clear the lines, and the game has come into life, Hillary. Definitely indeed. I think um, this is the sort of uh, yeah. final you require where you've got a one-on-one -on -one matchup. Alvin Otenio taking it to Alan. Alan Muka is back onto the field yeah. of play. I think he, uh, he wasn't really totally badly off. Probably placed a little bit of um, Vaseline to Ten, seal off the bleeding. And uh, I'm certain knowing Alan Omuka, he'll definitely look for a chance to just um, return the favor to Alvin Otenio <laughs> before the end of this game. Even things out. Wow. Line out won by Kufaru by Rocky Anguyo. Passes the ball up to... Uh, Harold Lubisia, Agustin Lugonzo calls for the mark. You could see his arm just fist pumping up into the air there. Just gets a chance to get the guys to console the back. Scratches quickly, decides to run the ball. Looks like there's um, some level of belief within um, Papa Nguvu, if not belief, some certain level of insanity and madness also brewing in there. Uh, 27, 28 minutes gone here. It's a Bamburi Super Series final. Kifaru leading Papa by three points to nil and uh, <coughs> some thundering hits, some big hits we've seen on the pitch. And uh, Papa taking an ill-advised quick tap penalty and they've been pegged back into their own side of the pitch. It's Kifaru who uh, seem to be in the ascendancy, if you ask me. Apart from two line breaks there from um, KCB, from, uh, sorry, from, uh, from Papa. Not in anything much yet. They, they don't have the consistency and the momentum you. generated for you to score a try in this game, to tie this match up. And uh, Kifaru will be happy with the scoreline. From, from a moment of temporary insanity, Papangubu lose the ball Set. after great uh, collection by Agustin Lugons in the 22 and give the ball to Kifaru. Mutuku gets the ball to Lubisi out. Lubisi looks for uh, runners. Brad Odoko gets the ball, does well to retain it. Takes it in, looks like he's a spot of bother. Ken Mosetti looks like he's trying to rip the ball off by UAP Kifaru. Do well to send in numbers in there. For as long as they drive the particular mole and get the ball done, they may be able to consolidate onto it. The referee doesn't like how that panned out and calls for a scrum down for Papanguvu. So just a case of a level of um, <laughs> carelessness from both sides, just gifting each other necessary possession. Absolutely, Hillary. I mean, both sides just seem to be... Last passage of play has been very scrappy, has been uh, not the best of where I've seen so far, but uh, Kifari won't mind it. They're leading by three points to nil, and so far they Coach. have had like two, 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 sky, I mean, two try scoring opportunities, and uh, they would be the happy of the side if the game goes on like this. <laughs> it's going to be a scrum feed for Coach. Papa, Bind. trailing by three points to nil. They will are going to feed the ball into the scrum. Okay. Michael Wanjala, yeah. okay. tackle there, hurried, and it's going. Could this be another try? Now, it was a knock on there, and I think the referee says it's a knock on. Some very quick alertness there from Eli Mukaizi on the Kifaru side, who harassed uh, Michael Wanjala there. So it's going to be a scrum feed. On the screen there is uh, the Papa coach, Kati Zulago, looking much calmer than we have been used to seeing him. He's always an animated figure moving up and about in the grey shirt, sitting back with the assistant coach. John Onyango, both of them Coach. former centers for Kenya, established players in their own rights. Um, and perhaps uh, the three point margin is not uh, giving them any level of stress so far. <laughs> okay, well, it's been stolen there and Papa on the attack. Mula Mad as well there to hey, actually on, drive on through about 50 meters from the back okay. of the scrum. They need to console and deep, uh, kick deep. It looks like Esau Chenu is setting himself for the kick. Doesn't need to. There's a box if they're coming in from Wanjala. Goes straight and hits one of our uh, <laughs> floor managers on the side. Rear, there near the center post. Sorry, near the center table. Papa. Uh, the subs are wa warming up on the Papa side. The and uh, Kifaru on the attack once again. Ezra Lagarde going to feed the line, um, going to feed the line out. We are still waiting for our first try of the game for the, of the Bamburi Super Series Final 2014. And George Mutuku does well to win the ball. George Mutuku in a spot of ball. Kifaru have done this over and over again. As soon as they pop the ball out, it looks like Papa and Hoover are aware of the tactic and just rush on through. So maybe they need to just hold on the ball, 
set up some level of platform to work on through because all the pop passes right through are just putting Mutuki in a spot of bother. Saved by the referee so in there because the Papa Nguvu defense just went over. But if they keep on doing that, it'll actually be very easy modality to defend against them, especially in lineups by Papa Nguvu. Yeah, Papa once again penalized for not releasing the tackler. And uh, it's on Kifaru at the moment as we speak. And it's it's about time Kifaru took advantage, made their made made their made their chances count um, in terms of territory. Mark is here. They are we are they have been here for the last couple of minutes and so far it's Kitten. all it's all Kifaru. I think the execution is what is lacking. But with Harold Lubisi at fly half and Brad Duako there and Pierce Shundu, they look very devastating with ball in hand. Much better there by Kifaru. They decide this time to keep the ball in. Looks a lot down better. Green, green. Still Papangubu managed through the fellows in, but at least Mutuku has a better chance to get the ball in. Lubisia gets in spins, goes back into the uh, short play area. Looks like he's looking for the force to come on through. Green. Dazzle to return the ball. Mutuku has got numbers out in there. Looks like Brad Duako setting himself up. Mutuku decides to utilize green. the tight five. Lubisia is now out. Different Alvin Oteno looks like he's going to run off Lubisia's shoulder. Lubisia sets himself deep like he's getting for a drop kick. Takes a chance, charged down yeah. by Indimuli, very well done, Indimuli and, and a couple of the Papangu players come on through Lubisia, dazzle yeah, to return Papangu. the ball despite all the pressure. Mutuku has the ball this time around, Papangu already Move found it. out, not looking at counter-racking, box kick, well done by Mutuku, Alan Omuka looks like he's able to field it, Second thinks back. about getting a half, does not, gets into Alvin Oteno, spins away, ball out for a line-out. Great interplay of... Uh, from, from Papa Nguvu there, some great, great rugby yes, being played there. Some great rugby, and of course, Harun Lubisia showing, showing presence of mind to go for the drop goal and win the ball again uh, immediately and uh, set up the box kick for George Mutuku. And also Papa there, um, Alan Umbuka showing no ill effects of that high tackle he had with Alvin Otero. <coughs> and uh, Papa still uh, looking to get their first point to the board in this game, but they're very much ensconced in their half. And as it stands, it is still... Kifaru leading by three points to zero. So, get stopped once. Papa with the with the line out drive here. Here comes Ken Mosetti. Tackled, tackled once, tackled well by uh, by Kifaru. Once again, Kifaru. Papa trying to build some okay. some yeah. some momentum here. Some good play there from uh, Eza Oteno. Good. Okay. Ken Mosetti has seen so much of the ball in this game. And it's Kif Papa on the attack. Some good interface play there from Papa. Agassin Lugonzo passes the ball to Mulama, does well to, to support, gets it back, passes it to Salato Muturi. Agassin Lugonzo is getting more and more into this particular game, showing some level of creativity coming in from the fullback position. Unfortunate incident there resulting in a turnover. Kifaru just managed to get the ball at the last season. Lubisia with the ball. Looks like he'll be able to kick down deep. Alan Umuka looks like he should be able to field it. He's got support by Mwale. Mwale and Umuka, the two wingers. Mwale decides to take the ball in, runs out, no one's tackling him. <laughs> Takes the ball straight into the charge. Agassin Lugonzo, sorry, that's the solution who picks it up. You don't really, see, uh, don't really see Flyers picking the ball and getting to the drive many times. Ezra Lagat Please uses blue. his uh, weight in there. Passes it back. Michael Angela has got number Akatu, passes the ball out. Doesn't look like Salato Muturi is aware of it. Martin Tubula gets it and it looks like it will be a scrum advantage for Kifaru. Wow. And unfortunately, a good thing just comes to a switching <laughs> halt right there. That's my main concern for, for, I mean, for Kifaru. They're doing all the right things, but once again into the, into the road zone, there seems to be Marquise some up. lack of composure Marquise from them up. and that will hinder them. They need to just settle down, find their footing, get those passes to stick, and they could, I mean, could pose problems for, for Kifaru. But as it is, it's going to be a scrum fit for Kifaru. <laughs> With four minutes to the end of the interval, remember, to the end of the first <laughs> half, it's Kifaru leading by three points to nil. It's absolutely amazing Crouch. for 35 minutes of the fighting rugby. You only have three Set. points on the board. Right? Yeah, absolutely. Which is which is a very token scoreline. George Mutuku with a box kick, and it goes out straight out. If you ask me. Okay, Okay, turn to the speakers. Turn to the speakers are blaring out so loudly. Okay, he's gone away. 
Allow the green. Allow the ball. Allow the ball to five. It's going to be a line of field Both there sides. for Ketan Blue. Papa Nguvu. I just plugged it off. Yes. Okay. Yeah. We have we plugged off the speaker. Hey, blue give three. Blue. <laughs> okay, Papa Nguvu. Papa Nguvu with a line out. Three minutes to go to the end of the first half, and it's a good line out there from Papa. Good line out drive. Blue. Good line out drive. Good line out drive. Michael Onjala now organizing that line out. Organizing the, the drive towards the try line. Can they get Moving. a score line before the end of the Moving. three blue watch first half? Back foot here. Remember they're trailing by three points to nil. Okay. They've seen a lot of the ball. Agostin Lugonzo has been very good with ball in hand, but they haven't been just been able to make that final pass. Okay, release blue. The passes are not sticking as we speak from Papa, but here comes Ken Mosetti. So Tenu looping over, getting the ball from Ken Mosetti. Ken Mosetti Leon, looking at running straight to Brad Oduako. Leon, we did see a third back, tackle Leon. coming in from his opposite number. So no, Pan's looking at trying to see if at all he can get through the opposite man by running. As of running running away from him as well as running through him. That didn't seem to work very well for him a couple of years back. Ball still up in the air. This time around, Alan Omuka does well to actually keep Alvin Ocheno from uh, getting the ball. And there will be a line out there for UFP Kifaru. Uh, we're getting the scoreline of the third and fourth game, which was played earlier between uh, Ndovu and Chui. Both sides, remember, lost <coughs> Leonard Blue in the same as last week. And Ndovu have beaten Chui for the second time by 18 points to 11, just across the fence here at the Impala Club. For those of you who are joining us, this is then the Bamburi Super Series final. Green two meters. So Kifaru versus Papa. Hey, let's give the channel. Kifaru blue. leading by three, three points to nil. Okay. And it's going to be a line out for Kifaru. And the Kifaru win it. But the referee so says forward, head and it. He it wasn't straight. Stop. And it's going to be a scrum for Papa. We are coming to the end of the first half. And despite their level of dominance at some point, Kifaru not on the points board yet. They've missed a penalty. It's Kifaru who will lead by three points to nil. And as my com my co commentator said, Hilary Teller, Crouch! It's, it's unusual Vine. for a big game to be 3 nil. A big game like this to be 3 nil only. I think Papa, for all the efforts, have just amounted to nothing. They need to go back, just understand that it's not really about running hard, not about the free flowing display of rugby, but it's about knocking points in. Perhaps the South Tieno needs to be given instructions to try attempts at getting drop kicks, and any penalty they should be able to try and see what they can do by slitting it through the post. 40 minutes done, they're still three points down. It's still an open Crouch. game, but they need to be a little bit more Fine. Uh, brutal, Set. if not ruthless, in the execution. They have actually shown some free flowing level of rugby. Agassi Lugons has been standard with Mulama and Mwale. Mulama there, getting the ball in there, Nine literally release. just hugging George Mutuku like a child, <laughs> checking him down. But you see, for all the efforts, they don't have any points on the board. And if this actually still just remains in the second half, it might probably end up seeing Kifaru just you know, winning this tournament. Because Absolute. they're doing the basics and they're doing them to great precision and uh, effect. Absolutely, Hillary. Despite their dominance and uh, I, mean, I mean swashbuckling play, um, Papa just haven't got into this game. They haven't put a foothold in, into this game, and it's going to be another dropped pass, another knock on from from Papa, and it's going to be a scrum. It's going to be a scrum feed for for Kifaru. Multitude of unforced errors coming up from Papa Nguvu. Um, I'm certain if I look at the analysis at the halftime on the level of enforced errors, total level of errors, it will be a tyranny of numbers on the Papa Nguvu side compared to UAP Kifaru. Yes, uh, despite all, all that territory and dominance, um, Papa just haven't made any, 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 any inroads in terms of points. And uh, right. Kifaru will be very happy with this scoreline. Certain match referee Constant Cup should have informed the teams that that was the last move of the game. He did look at, he did glance at his watch before Good that. Goodness. Rocky Anguyo picking up the ball, driving on through near the touchline. Andrew Chogo uh, pops a ball up his fingers, does not go forward, goes on back. Still, you have Piki Faru retain possession. Lubisi has got numbers out, decides to keep up. You don't see a lot of that kicking out into the open. Managers get filmed extremely well there by Tribula. Got numbers in the Alvino Tieno. Gets act on in. You really do not want Alvino Tieno getting into a contact face. Referee does not believe that that was done fairly. Penalty for UAP. From Papango, surely they should be able to take three points and at least get yeah, even parity before the half time break. Yes, yeah, I think this is a good opportunity now for Papa. But, well, they've decided to kick the ball and. <laughs> Alan Omuka. Was it? Interesting okay. decision. Yeah, hey, move on, Green! Almost coming through for him. It looked like he was the only one who knew what was happening. Ball did not touch not Green, you're down! 
um, giving you a picky faru some chance to breathe and just try and uh, consolidate the ball and kick it off. Green on the ground playing the ball. Penalty advantage there. Lubisia takes it quickly. They definitely will get another penalty because Papa Nguva not more than 10 meters. So definitely knowing, knowing what he was doing there, Lubisia, mm. quite a cheeky character. But, but, but very scrappy piece of play there coming from, from Papa. I would have thought they would have gone for the penalty. Well, Alan Lomuka was, it was, it was quick thinking on his <laughs> yeah. side, but I, I, I just thought probably, well, why don't you go for the three points? And that is the halftime interval. Kifaru leading by three points to nil. A very interesting first half we've seen here from both sides. So we'll catch you at the start of the second half as we go to the studio. The guy behind the mic with the Zuku. Eric. 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 the Eric. 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 Not strange to trouble. People will really charge you because I don't know you. Flashy and flamboyant, while Deco is all about religion. I believe in God a lot. Family and charity, this World Cup season, we go beyond players to bring you double bill of Adebayo and Deco. Hi, welcome to my home in Rio. Up close and candid. The love that I got for Kanu is bigger than everything, and he's my inspiration. On Friday 13th, on Zuku Life Channel 400. A brand new season. David! Brighter than ever. How's it feel to finally be in the game? I'm gonna nail this thing. Zuku Entertainment brings you a stylish, fun show. It's crazy! That will see one emerge as the ultimate design star. I am so in love with oh, what I'm seeing. It's a TV show you can't miss. It's just that simple. Design star, coming soon on Zuku Entertainment, channel 100. Welcome back to Scrum Down. This is at the halftime score, 3-0. And of course, this is a very tight game. Probably the first time we've ever seen a final having 3-0 at halftime. Jotham? Yeah, it, was, it was a tight game, I think. Uh, first few minutes, both teams had really hadn't settled into a normal routine. But credit to Kifaru. Drew first blood around 12th minute with a three-pointer uh, three drop kick by fly half Lubisia. And they seem to be controlling the game, Larry. That's they're my controlling take. the game. And of course, they're not as light as people would like us to believe. Because uh, people have always assumed that Papa are going to be the heavyweight. They're going to use their forward play to their advantage. But Kifaru is actually holding them in this game. Uh, Papa look a bit uh, frazzled at the moment. They're playing more of a catch-up game. They're, yes. they're reacting more to what uh, Kifaru are doing. Mm -hmm. And also a few misplaced kicks. We, see, we, uh, we saw Musetti trying to kick, clear a few kicks. Yes. And that didn't work out well the very first few minutes. And then from that moment, analytically, I could tell that this guy is not yet settled. They haven't yet sent to the group. And I think that's one thing you also pointed out. Yeah, I mean, to, the towards game. the end of the game, you saw, uh, I mean, a, 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 an opportunity to clear the ball yeah. that was not taken, of course, uh, the fullback for Papa Lugonzo. Mm -hmm. I mean, making a mess of things, he called the mark, but then decided to run the ball yeah. from your own half. Yeah. That is kind of dangerous play. And Kifaru managed to capitalize on that, nearly scoring the first try of this game. Game, but a very tight game all the same. Scores standard 3-0. Kifaru, I, I, I don't know what to say because we've always assumed that they were lighter at the pack and the Papa were going to take advantage and, and shove them at the forwards, but they're not that doing hasn't, that. That hasn't been happening. Uh, also, Kifaru's defense has been very, very tight. True. Uh, the few instances, that, the few chances that Papa have had to get close, anywhere close within uh, Kifaru's 22, have all been wasted. Tight defense by Kifaru. Yes. Uh, converting pressure, kicking the ball back, and then also a few uh, missed passes, uh, knock-ons by, by Papa. We're just making too many mistakes at the too center. Nobody actually has clear advantage of this game. Exactly. There are too many knock-ons. For a final, it is very tight. Very tight. Analytically, once again, just bring back to that point, I think it's... Kifaru have the upper hand. So whether or not that same I'm not momentum sure about it. I'm will not go sure into the second it. half, that's a big question. <laughs> uh, on the bench, you are seeing Curtis. I mean, they're very animated. But only time will tell. We are going uh, to the second half of this game. And uh, just to tell you, the other side, Dovu managed to clinch the third slot after beating Chewy. But 18, right 11. here, this is the grand finale of the Bamburi Rugby Super Series. Just some interesting highlights from that game uh, as, as we went into uh, the first half. 3-0, that is the score. We are expecting bigger things as this game gets into the second half. 
I mean, that was, that was, that was a mess of uh, okay, but the, the full back had an opportunity. On the replay there, we can see the differential between both teams. That was a drop kick slotted in there by Henry Lubisia. UAP Kifaru were not actually having one-way traffic. You can see there, Papangubu just trying to get into the, the scoring area there. Agassi Luganzo not utilizing his uh, proverbial side mirror and getting knocked there by Brad Oduako. Great work there by Shiundu. Shiundu has really not been in this game as he has been in other games. Alvin Oteno there definitely just throwing the gauntlet fast to Alan Omuka, the Papangubu captain. Of course, there's really been a, there's really been a little uh, separating both teams, William. Yeah, there's a little separating both teams. I've been impressed by the play of uh, Papa's uh, Agustin Lugonzo and Bushmuale. I mean, they've had a couple of line breaks, but the support play from their opponents is what is lacking. And that maybe could be the difference between them winning this game and losing this game because they've had a lot of ground and territory. And that, of course, was the collision between uh, Alan Omuka and Alvin Otieno in the first half. And we're happy that Omuka recovered. And that was that play by Alvin Otieno who ran so well. But once again, there was no support play. But Kifaru definitely will be the happier side. They are leading by three points to nil. And uh, despite all their play from Ken Mosetti, and uh, the, the likes of uh, Bushmuale and Agustin Logonzo, they haven't got anything on the scoreboard. So it's Kifaru leading by three points to nil in the Bamburi Super Series Final 2014. Nobody has clear advantage in this game, as you can see from that, uh, from that kind of play. I mean, nobody's running uh, straight, let's for starters. Yeah. Every, every time we've seen them running straight, they're actually gaining ground. Another thing that uh, we, we have to mention is the Kifaru defense. Yeah. Kifaru defense is actually coming to the it's, game, it's it looks, showing up. It looks a bit more organized than the Papa defense. And uh, we all know defense wins the tournament. Yes. Sure, you can score a couple of tries. Sure, you can make a couple of drop kicks, uh, penalty slots. But defense, at the end of the day, is what wins you the game. And uh, from the looks of it, once again, Papa will need to settle down. Uh, a few moments ago, I mean, a few moments in the game, the captain, Alan Luka, uh, had, sorry, blood been substitution for true, a bit. True, true. Uh, that didn't change the momentum of the game that much. But coming back in, of course, he had a bit of few impacts here and there, a few good runs. But I think both teams are yet to fully settle down. And Larry, when they settle down, I believe we'll have a Jordan, good game. Jordan, I think the game hasn't kicked off in essence. Because I, I think the last 15 minutes of the game, we have seen more action in 10 minutes than we have the entire 30 minutes of the first half. In the first half, they're just sleeping. I mean, uh, I think they're testing the waters because there are too many mistakes being made, too many knock-ons, uh, not enough runs, uh, everybody just passing the ball behind, nobody willing to engage and take the ball on a flat pass. If we see more of that, maybe second half might, be, might, might, might pro promise some fireworks because we're not seeing it. But some news that is coming in from the other side yeah. is that uh, Chewy, uh, Went down to Dovu, 18-11. <laughs> Larry, that, that looks like it was a close game again. Yet again, we have a few things We have a few things that are happening that are contrary to earlier predictions yes. when the tournament started. For example, quite obviously in the finals, we have Kifaru True. and UAP pop True. up. And then Novu, former defending champions, they won the game against Chui, but 18-11, not, a mar not the kind score. of margin you would expect. And of course, at first half, it was 6-3, uh, meaning that uh, the Ngongro United side, that is uh, the franchise of Chui, have once again um, surrendered the victory to a very strong Dovu. I think Dovu were actually disappointed from last weekend when they were beaten by Kifaru, disappointed not making it into the finals. And of course, this time around, they managed to clinch third spot. For the first two, only time will tell. We're getting into the second half between Kifaru and Papa. This is scrum down. The funny thing is, I can't see, so I rely on Frilla. Welcome back, welcome back. The players <laughs> are coming back onto the pitch. And I know Kati Solago will, will, would have had some very harsh words for his team. Some very good line breaks. But once again, the finishing, the finishing from his team, not the very best. And can Kifaru hold on for another 40 minutes? And in your picture right there, Paul True, the Kenya 7s coach, Kenya 7s head coach, their assistant and his assistant, uh, Felix Ocheng. We can see also in your shot there, the, um, of the Kenya Rugby Union chairman, Mwangi Mode and the Bamburi Communications, Director Susan Maingi. A full house here at the, R at the RFUA grounds here on Gong Road. 
Papa playing from right to left, Kifaru from left to right. And we are just about to start the second half of this Bambuni Super Series final. Can Kifaru win this tournament for the very first time? No one had given them a chance to win this tournament. But as it stands right now, they are 40 minutes away from winning the tournament. What can Papa do? They need, to be, they need to be a little bit smarter. They had some very good line breaks, but the momentum and the consistency wasn't there. What can Papa do? Buckle up your seats. We sh this should be an interesting second half. Bamburi Super Series Final 2014. And uh, Esau Otieno. Esau Otieno. Who's, um, Next 40 minutes of this match. Constant yeah. Camp having a word there with Alan Omuka. Omuka survived that high challenge, that high tackle. Oh, behind. And Constant Cup gets us off underway for the start of the second half. And Esau Teno kicks it on to the side. And here comes yeah. Rocky Anguko. And a storming first half. Rocky Anguko carried out by his forward. George Mutuku comes. Back. Looks for Harold Lubisia who puts it away. And the referee has awarded a Kifaro penalty already. Barely a minute into the second half. Papa were not 10 meters. It's a Bamburi <coughs> Super Series final 2014, and I can see Luis Kisia ready to start. Luis Kisia had a serious injury last week at the Kitui Sevens, but he seems to be good to go. And a kick there by. And out here, Blue. A kick there by uh, Harold Lubisi. I just didn't find touch. And I don't see just it found touch, but I thought it should have been a little bit <coughs> to the, towards the side of uh, Papa. But well, Ezra Lagat going to fit this line out. <coughs> Look like there's a substitution being done there for Papa and Guvu. Leon. Number six for okay. Papa and Guvu. And then comes in, looks like it's Luis Kissier who's come in. Your head of kickers are Luis Kissier comes in as an extra attacking option. Has, um, has a very interesting ability to just um, get something out of nothing in there. So I think Kissier coming in for Dewe Naswani, showing the intention of uh, Coach Kachisalago in his intent to just um, get back into the game. They've actually shown a better level of attacking flair, but have been unfortunate in us not to pump in any score lines of uh, any score within the score line so far yeah just uh, I mean, like i was saying they have had some very they, they, I mean, they've had two or three line breaks in this game but once again the the, the running lines of the players at papa just not the very best and the harold is a quickly taken top penalty and their papa are not 10 and they are penalized by the referee Great awareness that being shown by Lubisi. Of course, the extra 10 yards ten. Um, allows him to get a better chance to kick for post. <coughs> Got the penalty called by the referee, quickly decided to just run into the player. Was definitely trying to play for the advantageous play. George Mutuku took the first penalty, was unsuccessful. So he's actually pointed to the post. So I'm not certain whether he'll be able to take this or whether Harold Lubisi will take this. But it looks like Mutuku has pointed up to the post. Seems confident about this. It's marked dead center. All that's required is some um, drive from the kick and uh, the hope that there's no wind that will basically throw the ball off course. Yeah, power first in, in the legs and then the accuracy to, to get it right. It's straight down the middle, but it's, I think, 30 to 35 meters, if you ask me. Close to 40 meters. Three minutes into the second half, Kifaro with a penalty to extend the lead to six points to zero. If this goes in, George Mutuku steadying himself up. He gets a power, but not a precision. Green Much ball. better kick compared to the last time. Only needs to signal, or rather direct the ball into the upright. So still <laughs> remains three points. The difference between Kifaru and uh, Papa in this particular game is Kifaru actually taking all the chance. They get a penalty, they go into the post. 
Whereas Papa have been a bit, uh, for lack of a better Ready term, um, very wasteful. They've true. been, they've been, they've been. We, we did see that penalty uh, before the halftime break. Yes, uh, very true. Captain Alomka just getting the ball, kicking it up into the high heavens, and then just trying to chase uh, shadows. <laughs> jog I mean, out, that's the difference between both teams. And um, unless Papa Nguvu realize that each and every single chance counts, they might end up just yeah, getting the themselves uh, to blame at the end of this game. Very true, uh, Hillary. Yeah. I think uh, Kifaru have taken yeah. their chances, and they are playing the smart rugby well. Papa just seemed to be clueless as, as, as we speak. Pierce Shundu there going to tackle a very good ball there right. from Harold Lubisa, but it's Kifaru on the attack. George Utuku trying to foot. steady himself up and the look for his foot. runners there. Face the ball to Rocky and Guko. That are storming first half. Mutuku again. Harold Lubisa. Good play there from Kifaru. And the ball goes out. But some interesting play there from Kifaru. Looking for space and running, I mean, playing very, very expansively as we speak. Very promising attack there, just nipped in the bud. Kifaru just uh, doing well to try and return the favor to Papa. Papa have actually been the more vibrant side, but uh, I think Kifaru's discipline has just been to go around and slowly drag this game into their own level of advantage. Harun Lubisa utilizing his wily acumen to just, you know, get his team. Uh, <coughs> getting back into the game over and over again. Alvin Oteno, you can see, just throwing away what ball. You'd have fancied him keeping the ball in his hands and just uh, trying to have a bite of the jerry. Absolutely. I think uh, what, what Papa just have to do is just to make sure that they keep the ball in hand, look, and walk through the faces, and then the support lines <coughs> past the line breaks have to be very good. They have to support each other as, 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 as they make those breaks because they have, they have had, they've had some very good line breaks, but they've just not been utilized uh, extensively. A bit of time out call there. It looks like Alvin Oteno perhaps injured himself on the way down. So the referee has stopped the clock from running. Both teams just trying to chit chat, analyze what the, the chances they may probably have to just forge their case further in this, in, in this particular final match. Always is a good thing to have a breather, especially when you have a lot of blood rushing to the head. It's <laughs> a chance to think, maybe go around and just. Uh, Analyze what mistakes you've done and here's also a platform to improve on some mistakes that have occurred during the game Yes, absolutely. I think right now they're just maybe probably reviewing their strategy and what needs to be done uh, to, to stay ahead of, of Papa and Papa are asking themselves what do you need to do to, to get back into this game? It's still only 3-0. They're very much in, the, in it But they just have to be a little bit smarter and much more sharper in their in the in the in the red zone and probably uh, Get a try or a penalty, but uh, as it stands they have got a lot of work to do to, Coach. Uh, to, to, to get some points on the board. Big strong Alvin Oteno back on his feet. Referee constant cap. If you're ready. Calls for the scrum to actually take play again. Mike Wanjala there on your screen. Number nine for, for Nguvu with the ball. It'll be a scrum put in by Nguvu Papa. Who need to get themselves back into this game. They trail only by three points. But um, they've been very wasteful back. during the course of the game. Just kicking the ball Onside, unnecessarily, Run not back. taking penalty kicks when they ought to. Alvin Oteno feeling the ball in there, shrugging off, does not, uh, does not do enough to get off Onside, as Oteno's um, right. radar. Papa sending an entire platoon in there. They do the counter rack, win the they ball. Really? Alfa Sintemesi getting Blue. the ball, setting a platform there for Wanjala. Wanjala's got numbers out in there. Mulama not keen on, kick, on, on, on taking the ball in, gives it to Indimuli. Indimuli does, and you can see the ball still being retained there by Nguvu Papa. Alfa Soteno decides to kick deep, and it looks like it's a beautiful kick. Mm, it's a beautiful kick Gets uh, right onto the 22 meter mark. That's a bloody good kick. That's a, that's a beautiful really good kick, kick there from, from Papa. I mean, it puts, uh, it puts pressure now on, uh, on, uh, on, uh, on, on, on Kifaru. <coughs> very good kick there from uh, Brian Omondi. It makes sure that Kifaru turn them. It makes sure that Kifaru have to turn back. Okay, turn from from an attacking turn position green. or from a tackling position. It's a line out feed there from uh, Kifaru, and they win it. Release. Okay, back foot blue. Back foot. Luis Kisi trying to marshal the the Release, blue, blue attack there. Blue four. Just drives over Backfoot. behind Mulama there. They still retain okay, possession. Wanjala trying to shuffle Bandit a couple over. of players. Grand Sagara not looking very interested Backfoot. in getting the ball. Backfoot. Just uh, looks happy to just uh, funnel up and about. Backfoot. Referee calls for a knock on and UFP Kifaru. Um, benefit of a very uncharacteristic error by Ngugu. Ngugu just keep on shooting themselves in the foot. They do hard yards. They go 40 meters, get into the strike zone. 
and just out of absolutely nothing you see someone like Mike Wanjala doing a knock on where there's absolutely low pressure. Absolutely. Yeah, I mean they are they are they're messing themselves up. I mean that was a very promising position from from, from a line out. They won the ball, they were they were, they were gaining yards, but once again a costly error. Set. And uh, it's 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 Kifaru who have the ball right now. And Jordan took a piece of ball into the scrum. Gives to Haron Lubisia, Lubisia with a big punt and it goes out. Green. And it's gonna be a line out for Leonard Papa. Green. Forty-six minutes Forty played. <coughs> In the Bamburi Super Series final here at the Arifu grounds on Nairobi, Gong Road. Uh, we have 34 minutes to go, but still lots of rugby to be played between these two sides. And if the score is, the score is only 3-0, it's Looks like some leading. are happening right now. Brand Kivasia goes in to replace Alvin Ocheno. Looks like he injured his knee in that challenge with uh, Alan Omuka. Also warming up is Peter Kefa. Perhaps we may see a change with... Uh, Agassi Lugonzo moving to number 10 and Peter Kefa going to number 15. Agassi Lugonzo has been known to be very devastating what? from the okay. flag position and moving. maybe that might be the, the tonic that might moving. get Papa Nguvu to get some bit of points in this game. So with Peter Kefa warming up in there, Peter Kefa is an out and out fullback. And my suspicion okay, is that Agassi Lugonzo okay. would actually it's be moving to number 10's position and Peter Kefa getting 15. So it looks like Alpha Sotino may, might only have a couple of minutes moving. in. Avi Noteno must be feeling very gutted, okay, very great player. Absolutely love the contact. Looks Good like that hit with Alan Mumuka. Eventually just dragged on his body and Peter Kivasia comes in on his uh, as his replacement. Good bound to the shoulder. Yeah, I mean once again uh, Kifaru staying alive. They've they've actually managed to turn this ball around and they've won this ball. And it's actually Harold Lubisia punting the ball downfield. And it's gonna be a line out feed now for 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 Kifaru. Ezra Lagat, 48 minutes played at the area free grounds here on Gong Road. It's a Bamburi <laughs> Super Series final between uh, Kifaru and Papa. Kifaru leading by three points to nil. Substitution being done. And as expected, Peter Kefa walks in. It looks like Augustin Lugons has taken the position in the flag and uh, Esau Otieno right. walks off the field of play. So definitely uh, we are we're definitely placed for some exciting finish to this game. Yeah, and so, as you're saying earlier, probably it may be the trick that does wonders for... In fact, it looks like Esau Otieno has gone into scrum, so it is Mike Wanjala who's left Vantage. the field of play. Oh yeah, okay. Uh, Esau Otieno at scrum half, Augustin Lugons at uh, fly half, Peter Kefi at fullback. Interesting, interesting. I think they do not want to get yes, a Sao Cheno yes, yes, play because he is one of their better kickers moving. and he still has a bit of value, especially on uh, on trying to play. Brilliant pick there for Rocky and Guyo breaks and he looks like he may going make it. All the way to the try line. Does he get there? He drops the ball. He Rocky drops the ball. With a... He drops the ball with the try line at his mercy. And look at the anguish. Look at the agony in Tito Duke's face. That was a brilliant break and it all started from that line out. It all started from the lineup because they they, they, they they had a rolling mall and out of nowhere Rocky and Google just pop up pop pop from nowhere and good run from him. Peter Kefa did well to try and rip the ball. You can see as Anguyo was trying to stretch, it just I mean he just didn't have what was required. Moale could see stretching himself in there and Anguyo doing extremely well to get Kifaru into the whitewash uh, fever area. It's gonna be a scrum down for for Kifaru, Mulama, for Papa, and Papa holding their lines here. Big kick. With a very nice kick from the flat position. Goes to Sunny Lunani. Lunani has been very quiet in this game. Spreads the ball out to Shiundu. Shiundu looks at Kivasia. Kivasia gets the ball, steps. Kivasia has got a very fancy step. Gives it to Lunani. Lunani has a lot of trouble to try and get himself out of. Managers keep the ball in there. Mutuku does well to get to the back of it. Looks like he's got numbers off his right shoulder. Rocky Anguyo gets the ball, gains the another two line. meters. Looking good green. for Kifaru right now. They just need to go on through and just try and grind it. Nice step in there. Kifaru still with the insurgents. Chogo gets the ball on out. Kifaru looks like they're moving on through. Good. Almost goes dead. Referee calls for advantage in there. And I think there's a knock on there by Papa Nguvu. So Kifaru was still getting Rock. an advantage played because it looks like there's a knock on, on the ball there by Papa Nguvu. And Kifaru now oh, looking green. very, very rampant. Referee does not believe that there was any advantage, calls it back for the scrum down there. 
great play there some by very, some Pikifaru. very good play from from you Pikifaru. some very good offloads and very good interplay there from from the backs and the forwards and papa are living a dangerous life right now as we speak they are barely hanging on and Kifaru, if Kifaru are just a little bit more uh, ruthless this game could be over very good piece of play there from Kifaru, from George Mutuku to Rocky Anguko, uh, Stanley Lunani, who was just briefly, we've just seen him for the first time in this game, coming into life. And uh, George Mutuku there Hi. playing a key role. George Mutuku on to Harold Lubisia. Good break there, Pius Yundu. Mutuku again. Aaron Lubisia with a long pass. Ah, but they did a knockout there. That, that was a knock on. And the referee playing advantage. The referee is playing advantage. Brian Kivasia just <laughs> had to get the ball, and he had acres in front of him. There was absolutely no one further down him, but it looks like he had a two, I mean, a second mind and was trying to figure out exactly what his next two steps were before getting the ball. I yeah, mean, typical sort of area you'll get on through on the schoolboy playing grounds. <laughs> Not one you'd actually expect at the he, senior level. He kept his eye off the ball and uh, he didn't know that he had to hold on to the ball first before he makes the yards. But some very good play there from um, from Kifaru. Some very uh, sustained pressure from them. And Papa are under pressure right now as we speak because they're very much in their own half and they're being shoved in the scrum. Turn back. But they managed to hold on to it. And. Uh, it's going to be a Kifaru ball. It's going to be a Kifaru ball. They have turned it over. Kifaru have turned it over. It. Use it. Use it. Will Come you up. think this will perhaps be a, a replay of what happened in Kakamega where Kifaru led for the entire game and lost out to a proper try at literally the last minute? Hands off. Okay. Um, I don't think you can make the same mistakes twice. Advantage. Probably. It may have happened worse, but I'm just not seeing Kifaru in this game. Rocky Anguya shrugging Mwale again. Rocky Anguya looks like he's having <laughs> fun out there. Okay. Just, Rocky you know, Anguko showing no regard for human life there with a fierce friend. That's giving a piece of himself to the entire world out there. <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't see it happening. From, from what we are seeing right now, unless lightning strikes twice, I think it's all Kifaru as we speak. And, uh, the coaches will be concerned that despite all this pressure and momentum, they haven't put any points on the board. And it may, it may come to bite them later in the game. If you're just joining us, it's a Bamburi Super Series Final 2014. Kifaru versus Papa Fine. at the RFUA grounds. Kifaru leading by three points to nil. The sun is crawling its way out. And Rocky Anguko feeding, I mean, coming off the base of the scrum. And here come Papa. What can they do? Brian Omondi charging down the Ten middle. Okay. Esau Oteno playing at scrum half. Alan Omuka, not a very good pass there from Ken Mosetti. The pass wasn't very good and actually the ref says it was forward. The ref says it was a forward pass. I think Mosetti's body language changed um, sometime in the first half when he got a very, very hard hit from Brad Oduako. He actually tried running through him once or twice, realized he's a resolute person, and perhaps just the presence of Brad Oduako right in front of him is doing enough to cause all the enforced errors. Yeah, very, very true. I mean, uh, um, uh, Ken Mosset has been involved in some lively piece of play, some attacks, but that final ball to Alan Omuka was forward. So it's, it's a Kifaru scrum. Kifaru, Ryan Onguko, Rocky Onguko again. Sucking in defenders there. And they just need to place the ball down. Well, the ball has been turned over. Oh, it's a Sao Teno now with Papa. Gives it to Agustin Lugonzo. Ken Mosetti. Ken Mosetti. Oh, that was a forward pass. <laughs> I think Brian Oteno should have actually run that ball. <laughs> you know, it's, it's all totally robotic. There was a very committed defender coming in there. If he only just stepped back in, he would probably have been able to gain another 30 meters and probably created a true maneuver lap of his right shoulder. So, a case of being extremely robotic in there and definitely just uh, not working to their favor. Ah, once again, uh, Papa in a very strong position, but that's the final pass being let down. And I can see a substitution here. In comes Max Kangeri. Max Kangeri has come in to replace replace Brian Omondi. Max Kangeri has come in to replace Brian Omondi. 
and Harold Lubisi on the attack again. Brian Brad Oduako. It's Kifarul on the attack again, on the prowl. Looking to extend their lead. Mutuku. Lubisia. Piusiundu. Lunani chasing the ball but goes out. Max Kangeri, former Kenyan under 19 international. Could he be the difference? Could he be the spark that wins this match for Papa? And if the score remains like this, Hillary, this could be the lowest scoring final of the Bamburi Super Series since inception in 2003. It could be. I think the time when the University of France was actually conceptualized, it probably would have actually been <laughs> thought of as a pipe dream to get one of these University of France into a final. Yopi Kifaru have managed to disapprove and get into the final this year around, which is definitely a testament to the fact that you know, decisions do actually have very, very um, deep seating uh, consequences. And these are very good consequences. And as far as Kenya rugby is concerned, seeing a university's franchise with a bulk of the players being unknown, getting to the final and just giving, uh, giving a run for, I mean, giving, 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 giving established players a run for their money. And in fact, this could be the first trialless final we've had in, in, since inception of the Bamburi Super Series in 2003. If it stands, if it remains like this, but we still have another 20 minutes to go of the Bamburi Super Series final between Papa and Kifaru here at the RFU grounds. The sun has come out begrudgingly a bit. Still a bit cold, but uh, some good rugby being played here between these two sides. Kifaru leading by three points to nil. I think we'll have to qualify the cold bit. Um, Called by tropical standards. <laughs> Turn green. You ready, blue? Well, interesting. Kifaru in the line out. Rocky Ango gets the ball out. It looks like it's going to be. Oh, absolutely great tackle. Coming in there by Captain Alan Omuka. Absolutely great tackle. And Ezra Langa thought he actually had the entire way to the trial line. And Alan Omuka came in from there. And that was a great tackle. And now. Great, great work there by the captain. Papa on the attack again. Pius Shundu beats his man, but drops the ball, and it's going to be Max Kang. Luis Kisia didn't Luis take Kisia. the ball from the mark. Referee calls him back. Kisia with the ball. He's got Akatu. Francis Akatu pops it up to Salato and Muturi. Muturi runs on through. Looking good for Luis. Mugu Papa right Luis. now. They're in the right area. They look like they have numbers. They've got numbers on the left and on the right. Agassi Lugonzo opts to kick over Brian Kivasia. Kivasia feels the ball and just like that, a good thing goes to dead. Promising attack there from, from, from Papa. Wasted for the umpteenth time in, in this game. For the umpteenth time in this game, it's been wasted. So it's going to be Kifaru, Harold Lubisia booting out the ball. And it's a quick line out taken by uh, Papa, but the referee has said, you, you can go on, you can carry ahead. Ian Inimuli, great run in there, coming in from depth, setting up the platform for the players to operate from. And look like that numbers out, great work there. <laughs> you, you definitely don't see a lot. Dennis Mukabi doing a dummy, you don't really get to see a lot of that from a front row. And getting very hard meters in there. Papangu, maybe about five meters away from the try line. They've got absolute numbers on the left. If they can get the ball on out, they'll be able to just stroll into the try line area. Francis Akatu electing to do the twist, pick, drive and twist. Still look like they retain the They need to get the ball up. Referee calls for the penalty. And Papa Ngu the ball on, he has on the ball. In their heads against a goal for that wasteful play. Absolutely. Absolutely. That was a wasted opportunity. Once again for the amplitude time. Papa in very strong positions, but once again failing to put any points on the board. <coughs> and Kifaru survive. Kifaru have survived once again. It's such a promising break from uh, Papa. It all comes to naught. Kifaru still leading by three points to nil. And as I mentioned earlier, this could be the first trialless the quick final of the Bamburi Super Series since 2003. We've always had a try in every final of the Bamburi Super Series since then. This could be the first now, where the three points of Harun Lubisia gives them victory. 20 minutes to go give, to I'm the give, end I'm of this game. And Papa Green. Butchard wasted a couple of try scoring opportunities. Can Kifaru respond? 
Aaron, uh, George Mutuku, Aaron Lubisia. Gives it an up and under there. Goes up there. Alan Umuka gets it, but it knocks on. Aaron Lubisia again. All is the danger man. Rock. All is the danger man, and uh, the referee. Because initial knock on by Alan Umuka, there was no advantage there by UAP Kifaru. So initial knock on by Alan Umuka is what the referee Constant Cup has decided to yeah. award as advantage for UAP Kifaru. It looks like the referee has stopped the clock, consulting with the assistant referee on the far end of the pitch. Normally, yeah. when you see this, Williams. Taken, yes. Taken by which number? I didn't see the number because you could. Not a Christmas card, big flasher <laughs> to a player. Yes. The other assistant referee. So it looks like someone might be in the table. Yeah, a constant cap has called Raymond Oruo to his side to ask if there was any cause. Yeah. I, I saw Alan Omuka going to ask to, to tell the referee that there was some actually, impediment in that uh, high ball. So I don't know if there is a cut coming out here. So actually, it's media the penalty. So it could be a penalty against Green for obstructing this player who is coming to jump. Green obstructing. Less than 20 yeah. minutes yeah. remaining yeah. to the end of this game. Papa trailing Green? to Kifaru by three points yeah, to nil. Get the ball. Okay. It's a penalty for blue. Green. Obstructing the player coming to get the ball. Mutwiri. Okay. It would appear that the scrum run has been converted into a full penalty mm. after consultations there. So Yopi Kifaru elect to take the line out. I think they fancy that the uh, rolling mall has been working. Yes, for them. The, um, the rolling mall almost led to a try by Rocky Anguko at some point. So definitely um, uh, they will be looking at probably scoring from that <laughs> option. Green. Wait. Okay, check. It's a line out here. Yeah. Ezra Lagat going to feed. Okay. The Kifaru line out. Interfering in there. And some instructions there coming from the bench from Tito Duke and uh, Charles Govi to go for the line out again. Don't yeah. go for points, go for the line out again. Excuse me. Touching in such wait, wait, a wait, wait, position wait. to wait. Give foot a hammer. Put the, put the, put the foot on the, okay. on the, on the, on the Kifaru neck and win this game. Can they do it from there? It's moving. Doing well so far. Moving. You can see Anguo right at the back oh. and it looks like they might be able to get over. And it's a try! And they score the try. You were Piki Far who scored the try. Rocky Anguyo. Who would have expected it other than the man who has <laughs> looked like he's going to be the man of the match? Man of the match, absolutely, yes. And we saw this coming. And Tito Duke was absolutely right. He said, let's go for the letter again. And that may be curtains up for Papa. It will have to mean that Papa will have to score two tries in the next 15 minutes to win this game. And from what we have seen so far, we haven't seen anything that can give us the confidence that they can actually score. A deserved captain's try there by Rocky Anguio. He's basically been all over the place, pumping up his weight, punching way above his weight, in defense, in attack, just shrugging left, right and center, giving a piece of himself, leaving everything other than his dignity, you know, on the ground. And I mean, it's great to see him being rewarded with a try there. A well deserved try by Rocky Anguyo. Rocky, Rocky. Rocky Anguyo with a try there. The first try of the game, so no piece of history will be written. At least we've scored a try. We've had a try in this Bamburi Super Series Final 2014. So George Mutuku to come up with a conversion. And that try has been coming for the last few minutes. Can Mutuku add the extras? And George Mutuku nails it. George Mutuku kicks over the conversion. And it is Kifaru leading Papa by 10 points to zero in the Bamburi Super Series Final 2014. That was an important two points being slotted in. It, it definitely <coughs> now says for the couple of minutes remaining, for, you, for UAP Kifaru to lose this game, they'll require the opponents to score twice. 
very telling conversion, 10 points adrift, and I think the gauntlet has definitely been thrown by UAP Kifaru to Papanguvu. And you could see the body language there by the Papanguvu players when the conversion is being taken. They look almost dejected. I'm seeing uh, Coach yeah, Katiza Lagos run a couple more replacement. Peter Carrier yeah, coming yeah, in yeah. for Alpha City Messi. Perhaps a case of just trying to ensure that they can bring in every little level of support into the pitch to get them something out of this game. And but it looks like it's all Kifaru at this moment in time. Look at that, th look at that thundering drive. From, I mean, that, that, I mean, that rolling mall from, from, I mean, from Kifaru. They seem to be playing with their tails up. They are confident yeah, and very sure of what they are doing. The but the ball has been stolen by Kifaru, by Papa. Alan Wunga getting yeah. the ball, but getting ganged up. Quite clever leader by UAP Kifaru players. They know the level of oh, damage that Alan Omuke can, can cause on to their defense line if left all alone. And uh, they've been prudent enough to ensure that they go around and gang up on him two at a time. Great Good. kick in there, being chased up by Stanley Lunani, UAP Kifaru get themselves out of a trouble spot and will be a line out deep within the Papanguvu territory. Good kick there from George Mutuku, by the way. Very brilliant kick, very good box kick. If you're just joining us, it's a Bamboo Super Series Final 2014. Kifaru leading Papa by 10 points to nil. Okay, 10 blue. With 30 minutes to go. 30 minutes is a very long time in rugby, so what can Papa do? They've had a couple of line breaks in but doing this game from Augustin Lugonzo, Bush Mwale, but it just hasn't gone to perfection. A Sao Tieno there, but once again, the lineup wasn't very straight, adding more misery to Papa. Kifaru. As it stands now, everything Kifaru are doing is touching to go. The referee's decisions are going their way, the placement kicks are going their way. They just seem to be doing everything right and they're not done. Set. They want to add more misery to Papa here. And here comes uh, Rocky Amuko once again, who's been the man of the match. And Roll the away. count and the head here. Some brilliant rocking there. Stanley Lunani has been quiet. The referee says. Flanker and binding. He's seen an indiscretion there by uh, Papa. And Papa once again are penalized. Choice. So, yeah, yeah. Kifaru going for the points. Marquez, yeah. <coughs> this, if the score remains the same, I think Hilary, this will be one of the surprise champions in the history of, the, of this tournament. I think every so often in, in sports, you get a dark horse who just comes on through against all the odds, wins, and it would appear that if Kifaru can hold on to the next 12 minutes, they'll be able to go around and just write themselves as one of those fairy tale stories. <coughs> and um, it would actually be a fast time for a dark horse to get on through and win the rugby super series, the Bamboo Rugby Super Series. Absolutely. Totally scuttling the pecking order and uh, making mincemeat of any predictions that any pundits would have made earlier on before this game. Okay. George Mutuku lines up his penalty. Just a few meters away from where he scored the conversion. Can he get it? And he it right. Oh, he hits a punt of the post. Ken Mosetti winning off the rebound there. 23! Tackled there by Kifaru, but the kick just narrowly missed. And Kifaru once again get another penalty. It's going to be a scrum, uh, scrum feed for another down here. <coughs> Not convinced, still giving more instructions. Stop time for the sub. Charles Mbubi and the substitution there for Kifaru. Kevin Bundi comes in. He's coming with that Kelvin Gishere. Point. Set. Yes. Flankers green, Kelvin Gasheru, who's gone off, and Kev and Step Kevin green. Bundy comes in. Rocky Angupu once again doing damage from the base Seven of the scrum. Minutes. With Seven his green. picks. George Mutuku. Advantage of That side. pass wasn't very good, but it gets to Aaron Lubisia. What can he do? Lubisia <laughs> tackled there, but the referee says they were not 10. They were not 10. And Papa's body language, uh, just showing it right now. Alan Omuka with his hands on his head. Not behind the last foot at the rack. 
not amused by what he has seen. <laughs> And then <coughs> a very exasperated Curtis Olago there having having some words there with the match official <coughs> with the technical team there not looking very happy. <coughs> Something seems to have ticked him off. But clearly I think it must be the score line. It must be the score line which is not very <laughs> Very nice to his favor. Of course, you've got to empathize with Curtis Olago. He has actually been in two previous finals. Kenya Cup with KCB, Enterprise with KCB. He's lost in both finals. It, it would have actually been something great if he won this final. It looks like he's perhaps still on the losing end. Mutuku with a penalty conversion kick. It goes on wide. Scores remain 10.0. I think Curtis degrees. perhaps is scared of the deja vu scenario coming back up to play. And you've got to empathize with him. <laughs> There's a lot of work that has been placed in the last Green. six weeks of this competition. There's a lot of passion, emotion. He's a former player. He knows the level of sacrifice that have actually been done and you've got to empathize with him. Absolutely, Hillary. I think uh, frustration getting the better of him there. But Papa about to kick off this 22 meter, uh, this 22 dropout kick. It finds Mutuku there, Come back. goes behind. The head. Play on. Stanley Lunani has been very quiet. Let's see what he can do with the ball. Oh, good kick there. Skins his man and goes all the way. Stanley Lunani, can he get his man? No, but missed That's opportunity there, but a neat break there from Stanley Lunani. My co-commentator said he was very quiet, but I think he's brought this game to life. Stanley Lunani has woken up at the 72nd minute, and that is exactly what he's capable of doing. Up and under, up, runs on out wide, looked like he was all the way there, then as out you know, did enough just to stifle him. And when the ball actually went back, Shundu didn't pick it up. Cross covered there by Peter Kefa and great work there by San Lunani. <laughs> In your picture there, Charles T. Singovi giving some instructions there. And once Penalty again, advantage Kifa for Kifaru. Everything looks like it's going Kifaru's yeah, way everything right Everything is now. going Kifaru's way. George Mutuku. The players were not even two years. George Mutuku knew what he was doing there. He was actually <laughs> trying to play for time. <laughs> And he gets it because the referee already played advantage. They're just trying to go on through and drop down the clock. And you can actually see the mark of players who are aware of the time, aware of the position and aware of the scoreline, most importantly. Absolutely. It's all Kifaru right now. With seven minutes remaining to the end of the Bamburi Super Series final 2014, I thought Papa would have Open the, the gap in the scrums. But I think Kifaru right now are just tearing him apart in the scrums. It's a line out there. It's Kifaru with the ball. They scored the first try with this rolling move. move. Can they score another one? Can see Rocky and go right at the back of the mall again in a similar position like he was Release in the mall. That's try. Just trying to get the players in there and they go down. Does the referee think it's good? It is and a it's try. try. And it's game over. I think, I think that is a nail on the coffin. Game Rocky over. Ngoyo, second game try over. of the game. Man of the match performance. I don't think you can actually take that away from him. Game over. And Kifaru deserved winners of the Bamburi Super Series. The game hasn't come to an end yet, but the scoreline now stands at 15 to 0, with less than five <laughs> minutes remaining to the end of the game. And once again, a, ro a rolling, a rolling mall try by Kifaru. Rocky and Guko once again <coughs> playing a blind of a game, man of the match for me, if you ask me. Both Charles Ngovi and Tito Duke have won the Super Series in their capacities as players and it would appear and I mean barring any unforeseen eventually that they are well on course to actually winning their first Super Series tackles as tacticians. Absolutely. Kifaru, who no one expected them to be in the final, let alone even winning the tournament, are minutes away from winning their first ever Bamburi Super Series Championship here at the RFUA ground. The score stands at 15-0. And Papa totally outclassed in this second half by this rampaging, robust young boys of Kifaru who are made up of university students or who play for university sides. Here comes George Mutuku with the conversion. Had the accuracy but didn't have the power. Four minutes to go to the end of the game. Some substitutions are about to be done here. I can see uh, Jimmy Mwangi 
Caleb Kiprotic, all about to come in <coughs> for the last five minutes of this game. Hey, hey, wait, Faru wait. 15, Papa 0. I think with five odd minutes remaining with a 15 point to zero scoreline, it looks like we actually have the winner decided. Harold Lubisia getting a much deserved break coming or not. George Mutuku moving into the fullback position. So it, 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 we will wait to see who gets into the number 10. But Haran Lubis has played a very, very inspirational tournament this year. Yeah, absolutely. He's been one of the top performers of uh, the side. Foot. And Silas Kiprotic with a the kick there. Caleb Kiprotic, I beg your pardon, with a kick. No hands, Blue! It's okay, there wasn't and a mole uh, formed, it's okay. The scrum being held there, by the way. Oh, the scrum, sorry, the mole there, the boat is all over the place. Rocky Angu gets the ball again. He looks like he's just not tearing. Two tries down, still gets the ball, body on the line, okay. still has a lot of passion and energy in him. Back. Peter Kefo manages to the ball on the second attempt, gets into a spot of trouble in there, should have been able to play out okay. the players that he had while. Three minutes remaining. No. Don't think that uh, it bounced. actually goes on through to matter for anything right now. They'll need to score at least four times to win this four game. Win this at game. least three times to be able to draw. This so is it's not really a tall order in three minutes to be able to do that. And Kifaru don't look like they're relenting. You can see just that try has just re-energized them. They're buoyed. Their defense has actually become sharper. Yeah, they're galvanized and they're actually finishing the side. I mean, finishing yes. the, the match, the much stronger side. Wait. They are, everyone on the, on, on the Kifaru side is up. I think they can smell the trophy from where they are. Three and with three minutes remaining, it's Kifaru leading Papa by 15 points to nil. Kifaru have played the smarter rugby and they are actually in a very strong position. I do recall I asked you earlier on in this first half whether you think it'll be a case of deja vu with uh, Nguvu Papa having yet another got your Kifaru. I guess the answer is uh, being shown in there. Brian Kivasia doing some <laughs> construction working manual in there. Just pummeling over his opposite player. Jale Kiprotic gets the ball. Does well to hold on to it, but it looks like Agassin Lugonzo will be able to get it. Referee, Constant Cup, believes that there was an infringement in the initial rack. So UAP Kifaru still have uh, a penalty advantage. He's a scrum of his face. That was a run from, from Kifaru. <laughs> and, they're not, and, then, and they seem just to, to want more. They want more points. They want more tries. They're not satisfied. You can see that there. Brian Kivas here with a uh, thundering. In comes Jimmy Mwangi and uh, in comes Jimmy Mwangi, uh, Greg Dunman, Soita Wekesa, and Israel Soy. As uh, Kifaru empty the bench, they have Stop. literally emptied the bench. They have emptied the bench. Everyone is now playing from their bench. And Tito Duke already dancing, jumping. He's excited. He knows. The trophy is in their grasp. It's done and dusted. It's going to be a line out for, for Kifaru right? with uh, one minute remaining okay. to the end of the Bamburi Super Series 2014. <laughs> Eli Mukai is there winning that ball from the line out, but the ball goes out again and it's going to be a papa ball. Destruction. But Kif Kifaru would not mind. Being in this position. But once again, the pass is just not finding ball to hand. And the referee says it's a knock on. We are playing the last few seconds of the Bambudi Super Series Final 2014. Kifaru about to be crowned champions of the 2014 edition, joining an illustrious company of legs of Ndovu, the Rhinos, the Cheetahs and Papa, who have all been winners of this tournament in years gone by. I think, William, this is just uh, a matter of the clock running down. I think we already know who the winner is for the 2014 edition. It will be a surprise winner. It actually would not have been fathomed at the start of this event, guys, at any moment in time during the composition of these franchises, that UFC Kifaru, made up predominantly of university players, would be able to be the ones who'd come around and stand heads and shoulders as the franchise Coach. champions of East Africa. Yes. Mind. The moment they Set. beat Dovo, I knew these guys, this team was serious. But well done, well done to Kifaru. And the ball. Yeah. 
The ball is still going on right now. The, the referee hasn't blown the final whistle yet. And it's all over. It's all over. Kifaru have won the Bamburi Super Series 2014. Hugs, excitement all round. Charles Govi and Tito Duke for a job well done in bolding this team to win the Bamburi Super Series. Well done to Kifaru, your Bamburi Super Series champions 2014. Final score, Kifaru 15, Bamburi 0. Kifaru 15, Papa 0. I beg your pardon. Cheers, man. Papa 0. Indeed, this team has actually displayed what you actually call the character that is required of a sporting team. They didn't actually have any outstanding flashing player. They played onto the basics had an extremely disciplined defense, a disciplined approach to how they actually conducted the game, took their chances and the penalties came on through, played as a team, and to be very honest, they deserve a champions of the 2014 event, William. Yes, they were, I mean, I mean like I've said all along, they played the smart rugby. Once they got their penalty, they were in the lead at 3-0, and from then on, they looked like they, they were the side most likely to score. But uh, uh, commiserations to Papa, who had a couple of, ni of nice line breaks and chances, but once again, they couldn't capitalize on them, they couldn't finish them, and they have finished on the losing side. So it's Kifaru, winners of the 2014 Baburi Super Series this year. We'll go in for a one-minute break, and we'll resume for the post-match interviews, and after that, we'll have the big one, Kenya versus Western Province. Not strange to trouble. People will really charge you because of the news. Flashy and flamboyant. While Deco is all about religion. I believe in God a lot. Family and charity. This World Cup season, we go beyond players to bring you double bill of Adebayo and Deco. Hi, welcome to my home in Rio. Up close and candid. The love that I got for Kanu is bigger than everything, and he's my inspiration. On Friday 13th on Suku Life Channel 400. A brand new season. David! Brighter than ever. How's it feel to finally be in the game? I'm gonna nail this thing. Zuku Entertainment brings you a stylish, fun show. It's crazy! That will see one emerge as the ultimate design star. I am so in love this is with awesome. what I'm seeing. It's a TV show you can't miss. It's just that simple. Design star, coming soon on Zuku Entertainment. <laughs> Channel 100. <laughs> I'm with Rocky Aguko, captain of the UAP Kifaru, who have just emerged victorious in the final of the 2014 Bamburi Rugby Super Series. Rocky, first of all, congratulations on the win. How was the game? Uh, it was a difficult match. We came in considering they'd beaten us at the group stage, so we came all out. 3 0 at halftime, you, your team led. What was the halftime talk like? Uh, our coaches probably told us to correct the small mistakes. Our territorial play was a bit luggish. So that's what basically what we corrected towards the end of the game. All right. Thank you very much, Rocky. Congratulations on the win. Cheers. Alan Omuka, captain of Nguvu Papa, who have just lost in the final of the 2014 Bamburi Rugby Super Series. Alan, hard luck. Your thoughts on the game? Uh, first of all, I'd, I'd like to thank the Kifaru team for bringing the game to us. Uh, we were slow off the blocks. Uh, the game was tense in the first half. The whole of the first half was so tense. Uh, in the second half, they proved to be much better than us. I won't take that away from them. Uh, they are young, they are young boys, and they played, they played their all. They played their all. I believe uh, we didn't play our all. And one to us, we didn't, we didn't do what we were expected to do. All right, thank you very much, cheers. Alan. Best of luck next time. Cheers, cheers. Go, 
Managed to take the third slot yeah. after disappointing for the winners. Well, Lovito, you can pick up picture, group photo. You're on your drama, Sasa. Ah, 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 they are receiving their medals for a job well done. No one expected Kifaru leave alone to be in the final, but to win it and to win it so convincingly here by 15 points to nil. I think the scoreline would have been bigger were right? it not for the missed uh, kicks, the missed conversions, and the missed penalties, uh, Hillary. Definitely. I mean, UAP Kifaru came into this tournament, not even the game, as total underdogs. They had a selection of players who are perhaps not the well known within the country. They only lost once to the team that they defeated eventually in the final. They lost in Kakamega to a last minute try. They look like they have gone on through, looked, looked at uh, what they probably did in that particular game, managed to have a very sterling performance in Akuru against Renzori, did extremely well to beat a much fancy Ndogu side who are outright favorites at the start of this tournament. And um, I mean, you know, seeing them picking up the trophy with a 15-0 near perfect performance in the final is definitely just, uh, I mean, definitely goes to show that indeed they deserve a champions. And uh, it would be great to see just exactly what these players take from this particular event to go on through and just um, pick up on all the other rugby uh, playing careers. There's still the seventh circuit that's yet to come up. The 15 aside circuit, sorry, league will resume sometime around September. And it is actually my honest opinion and hope that these players will not only just be a one one hit wonder and that they'll be able to go on through and show this level of form over and over again in the subsequent years because this is a young crop of players. Speaking earlier to the chairman, earlier this week the chairman among people he says that some of the players who don't make it to the Rugby World Cup qualifier in Madagascar will play against Uganda in the Elgon Cup. Kenya A side, not a Kenya team, but a Kenya A side will play uh, which will be composed of players from the Bamburi Super Series and some of the guys who don't make it to Madagascar. So I expect to see some of the players from Kifaru me being included in that squad to play against Uganda uh, sometime later this month or next month. Indeed, William. Of course, it's always a great feeling to win a championship. These players have actually done it, you know, at an average of about 23, 22 years old. This is something very, very great. Shows the level of development and the capacity that rugby has in the region to be able to go on through and just become the premier sport. Absolutely. Um, uh, a, very good, a very good crowd here to watch uh, Kifaru win in the tournament. And uh, they have done an absolute job. They have literally played out of their skin to win this tournament. And uh, they are right now going to receive the trophy. Rocky Anguko, the man who has led this team. And there they receive the trophy. Bamburi, Super Series Champions 2014. Kifaru. RFC. Ivan Anguo there deservedly picking up the trophy. This gentleman has been quite a revelation and it will be great to see this fellow just growing stronger than he already is because, I mean, as it is, he's not really a bad player, but I'm just trying to imagine the level of development that he can have in the next three or four years. Yes, yes, yes. It's very true, Hillary. I mean, this is a guy who should be probably be knocking on the door of the, of the Kenya 15s team in the next couple of years. We expect to see him been play, playing um, in, in, in the setup of the Kenya 15 team for the next couple of years. But well done, well done to Kifaru for upsetting the form book and for winning the Bamburi Super Series 2014. Picking up their trophy for 200,000 shillings, UAP Kifaru. Kifaru, incidentally, in Swahili means Rhino, and I can tell you for a fact the Rhinos charged their way through Papa, who were actually meant to be Sharks, and deservedly winners of the 2014 Bamburi Rugby Super Series tournament. Yeah, hats off to them, well done. Commiserations to, uh, to uh, Papa, who will now re receive their second place runners-up medals. And uh, I also tend to think that Dobu should get some medals for finishing third. I believe that's part of the transition that's on. This has definitely been a nice, nice mouthwater for what will actually be on in the next 30 minutes. This will be the big one. Western Province making the maiden tour into Kenya, playing against a Kenya select side. 
This will actually be one of the training matches that will allow the technical bench to select the squad that will eventually travel in the next fortnight to Madagascar for the 2015 Rugby World Cup qualifiers. Kenya has never been this close to qualifying for the 2015 Rugby World Cup qualifier. They travel into Madagascar on the 26th of June and they will actually have to fight it out with Zimbabwe, Madagascar and Namibia to decide who books Africa's ticket at next year's World Cup. Kampala over weeks ago, and now it's come down to this. And congratulations to UAP Kiparu on the fantastic game. And um, I'm really, really happy because you can see the level of rugby has gone up another notch higher. And for us, we're really proud of the development. The students winning the event. Your take on that? Wow, did you see the enthusiasm and the passion? So no, I think you could see how passionate and you can see that people are looking and seeing that this is a very good venue for you to be Rugby is growing, you can see the passion and please, more students, more people, please join the game of rugby and you could be the one playing the next match next year as a Kenya, part of the Kenya team. Do we see Bamburi still being in this competition in the years to come? Uh, we've been with uh, this competition 12 years now, uh, 10 years as a title sponsor. We've seen the growth of the tournament, we've seen the growth of rugby, and we're really pleased about the development of the sport. So why wouldn't you want to be part of this great event? So, fantastic. Thank you. Thank you very much, Susan. Thank you very much. I am with Mwangi Mudhe, Chairman of the Kenya Rugby Union. We are on the sidelines of the Bamburi Rugby Super Series 2014 edition. Chairman, we have just witnessed an exciting final. The students from the UAP Kifaru franchise have emerged victorious with a 13-0 win over Nguvu Papa. Your take on that game? Oh, it's very, very exciting uh, to see combined universities winning the, the Super Rugby, Bamburi Super Rugby, because uh, one of our best partners at Kenya Rugby Union is the universities. And we have so much depth at the universities. They dominate Kenya 7s, they dominate Kenya 15s. And it's very exciting to see the combined universities, Kifaru, also controlling uh, the Super Rugby. And uh, that's a good sign. It's a good show. It shows that uh, the future of Kenya Rugby is very, very safe. Now, speaking about the future of Kenya Rugby, of course there's a game coming up. Uh, Tasca Simba playing against the visiting BHL Western Province. Your take on that as well? That's a big one, big one. Uh, we all know that uh, Western Province have brought a very, very uh, strong side, strong representative side. And we know that uh, Tasca Simbas uh, played in the Vodacom. We know that the team has been uh, strengthened uh, by, by good uh, input from the Kenya Sevens. And uh, we, are going, we are looking forward to an exciting afternoon. Uh, it will be an, an afternoon of exciting rugby. Uh, this is our last uh, major test as, uh, as we, 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 we head to Madagascar to the qualifiers and it's very, very important that Kenya, we put our best, uh, best foot forward and I call upon all rugby, rugby rubbers to support the team. Thank you very much, Chairman. Enjoy the next game. Thank you very much. Asante. <laughs> That's impressive.
they ready? I think it's ready. Hype man number one. Make him lose his focus. Oh no, sorry. All right, check this out. We shall invigorate it. That right there is impossible. Excuse me? Video is what having the time of our lives. Are you ready, Patrick? You bet. And it was all going so well, and then this happened. Come on! Join us. These are moments that I treasure. Gets in there. What's on earth? What's on earth? Jesus said, come unto me, all you that labor and are heavy laden, I will give you rest. Not strange to trouble. People will always charge you because they don't know you. Flashy and flamboyant. While Deco is all about religion. I believe in God a lot. Family and charity. This World Cup season, we go beyond players. To bring you double bill of Adebayo and Deco. Hi, welcome to my home in Rio. Up close and candid. The love that I got for Kanu is bigger than everything and he's my inspiration. On Friday 13th on Zuku Live Channel 400. A brand new season. Brighter than ever. How's it feel to finally be in the game? I'm gonna nail this thing. Zuku Entertainment brings you a stylish, fun show. Ah, it's crazy. That will see one emerge as the ultimate design star. I am so in love this is with awesome. what I'm seeing. It's a TV show you can't miss. It's just that simple. Design star, coming soon on Zuku Entertainment, channel 100. And the champions of the Bamburi Rugby Super Series 2014 are Kifaru. First time ever University Franchise has taken it, and also first time ever that we've had a Bamburi final end with such scores. I'm telling you, 15 nil the final score. I think this is the first time we've, we've had a, a zero score ever. Zero score, exactly. From the opposition side. Which is, uh, which kind of wraps up this entire tournament. A bit, of, a bit unpredictable. We start off with six teams in the beginning. Yes. Uh, I think we had two sides from uh, uh, Uganda, yes. our friendly neighbors. They fell by the wayside. Fell by the wayside, mm -hmm. and that's probably another question uh, for another day. But the final ended up with uh, UAP. Uh, UAP, uh, Kif sorry, Kifaru. Yes. Kifaru and Papa, let me just stick to that. And they met before match day three in Kakamega, uh -huh. where Papa clinched at the last minute. Yes. So this game just came, on, came, came down two sides wanting to prove it. Kifaru proving that they probably could have beaten Papa the first time and ended up here unbeaten. And Papa proving that no, it was. No, I don't a fluke. think that's the case. I think the fact that uh, uh, Kifaru came into this game after having beaten the favorites in Dovu, yeah. I think they came into this game with their tails wagging hard. That was a huge momentum, actually. It was a them. huge momentum. Because Dovu and are, were the defending champions. Dovu were the defending champions. Everybody assumed that they were going to take it because they were going to match uh, Kifaru at the yeah. forwards. But but as you saw, Kifaru managed to map, match Papa at the forwards. They pushed them. And of course, if you ask me, man of the match for this game, of course, goes to Rocky. Rocky, 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 Rocky. Rocky, Rocky, Rocky was Rocky. very, very dominant. Not yes. afraid. Uh, I mean, the competitors kept on saying that he epitomized the entire team, punch above their weight, and they were yes. very, very relaxed. I think one thing you have to admit, you and I can agree to, we may have disagreed upon who may have to take true, the title true. before the game, but Kifaru controlled the game. They, they set the pace. They did. They drew first blood the, the, within the first 12 minutes yes. with a drop kick, three mm -hmm. points by Lubisio. Then from then on, they just controlled. First few minutes of the second half, they did contain the game, and uh, Papa no, if, did If you ask me, plotting. I think what they did well was just they did enough when yeah. they were in their half. Exactly. And then they finished it off when they're in the opposition half. Yeah. If you look at the, uh, the final tries, uh, going to the corner, uh, bring it up, mole, push, 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 yeah. try. Exactly. Now, nobody would have ever assumed that Papa were going to be shoved the way they were shoved mm -hmm. on a mole. They, because Papa are very dominant at the forwards. They, they look frazzled. They did. If you look at uh, the number of forward passes they had, I mean, both sides had forward passes, yes. both sides had missed passes, but uh, Papa just looked unsettled. Okay, credit to Papa also. Alan Amuka, their captain, stood yes. out several occasions. He had made a try-saving tackle 
I think at some true, point in the true. second half. Mm -hmm. And he actually stood out. But we needed the other players also to step up. No, Mossetti, he tried. But Mossetti he was, he was try. more dominant in the previous game than exactly. he was in this he game. He was very, I mean, it was, it was quite a, a banal performance from yeah. Papa. Uh, not the kind of performance we expected. Of course, the coach, uh, Curtis, is going, to be, he's going to be kicking everybody, wondering what the hell went wrong. But one coach who's going to be celebrating, of course, is Tito Oduk. <laughs> I'm telling you Tito that guy. Has been. He has been singing <laughs> about this game, I think, for quite a long time. He has quite been. Time. And the good thing is he's been singing praises of his team. Yeah. Uh, teammates and these players and of course Motuku once again yeah. came up and you know he delivered for it, on the day it's funny enough he had a concussion the weekend before, in the weekend before but he was declared fit to play in this exactly, game yeah. and of course some highlights from that game if you can just get that up uh, on the screen in case you miss some of the interesting moments because I think the fact that um, uh, they were being shoved yeah. either at the scrum downs and at the molds yeah Papa I think they've just lost it I don't Pop. think I don't think they're as dominant either well, that or Kifaru are not as weak as we've always assumed. No, I think it's a mixture of both. Kifaru probably played that smart game, and uh, we can see from the highlights coming in. Uh, I mean, that, that was, was a try that, that they, was they, an they almost that was an almost attempt to try, but, yes. uh, but then lost the ball forward. Just look how the Kifaro players utilize the space. But you see, the, the issue of running forward here is uh, moving a bit back and of course losing a bit of ground that had been gained. Missed tackle there by But the thing Papa. is, all his support is behind him. Exactly. Then he straightens the line. Ooh, a big hit there. Credit to Papa on the defense, but that was that was telegraphed, obviously. There was nowhere else the player was going to run if True. you look at it. But if you see the way they are reacting, they're very quick on the breakdown. And of course, giving away so many penalties, uh, the player there trying to get it from the wrong side. That Ford, is a flat that pass. Boom. Flat. That is the game line you beat it. And there is your man, in. Rocky. Look at that. Ooh, the sort look of Look at that handoff. Going to, going to the touch line. But a big game there. And of course, uh, the, 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 the referee for this game was Constant Cup. He yeah. was on top of things. A brilliant learn from uh, from Papa, but they've just been frustrated. Kifaru have done just um, enough to ensure that the momentum is not there for Papa. Like, uh, rugby is a psychological game. A lot of people believe that rugby is about size and speed. But in the day, it's all about the mind. And Kifaru came ready to control the game and maintain that control until the very end. The but very few moments, if you look at it right now, the very few moments that uh, Papa had to break, forward pass. Forward pass, it up. penalties, penalties, uh, just knock-ons, so many mistakes being made. They and didn't of course, have that enough is what time to build it, the momentum. No, it, breaks, it breaks your momentum. Exactly. It breaks your momentum. As you can we see, have that is the mole. That is where the try came from. from. And of course, they're very dominant. Everybody is consolidated. If you look at the forwards of, the, of, of Papa, all of them are outside. Exactly. Okay? The, the, the Kifaru forwards are in it. They're pushing, try, and of Kifaru, course, celebrations Kifaru right after it. Kifaru win. And this of course, the first time a university franchise is taking it to the wire and winning it. We have to say kudos to the coach, Tito Oduk. He must be a very happy man. And of course, kudos uh, to Kifaru for clinching it. They wanted it more on the day. And they, and they are the bigger team of the day. All right.